uh first of all thank you so much sir uh, for coming on the podcast with us once again and helping us understand a uh, little bit more about the markets uh this uh, i mean I, ever since the first podcast we had and even before then i have been a fan uh you are a complete all rounder i don't know how many talents you have i i i don't think honestly nobody has been able to count that i think but uh but once again thank you so much for joining us and i think so generally how we generally do it is i have a few my, few of my questions and then we take up uh, public question and uh, that's how it happens but uh, aaj already we have been flooded with so many questions from your followers that i think i it's better to give precedence and just start with them uh of course let's start with in general thoda sa your view on markets and uh, and then we'll take up directly their questions maybe sir yes first of all thank you for such a lavish introduction i don't know whether i'm worthy of it but you know a person is only worthy of what his followers do. so we are very grateful for all the to all the followers that i have because it is their uh, combined love and affection that basically directs me here uh, now as a standard thing before i give my views uh, you know i'm these views are only personal views as an investor and i'm not a registered sebi advisor so please uh, you know include that in your understanding so you know the interesting part of uh, everything is that uh, since the month of february as i have been talking on twitter as also in some of my tv or uh, spaces talks from february march april may uh, effectively you know we turned uh, i turned negative on the market now negative on the market does not mean a sold my portfolio but i did not i you know i moved away from buying simply because there were a lot of problems that had come out in the world which most people are aware of but i had also said that i would like to see the behavior of the retail because the retail had not seen a drawdown in the market and it was very important uh, to see how their behavior was to pan out when the market returns were to turn negative so what happened is that in the uh, february to may months by avoiding the fresh purchases or by sort of you know not doing much uh, uh, in the market on the bull side you effectively were able to somewhat insulate yourself from uh, from the market fall which was quite severe but then what happened is the market at that same point of time the, there were many measures all around the world to tackle inflation uh, almost every country's government was became very uh, adamant about taking steps and india was taking steps and certain measures were taken by the indian government which were peculiar to india uh, rbi statements which turned very bearish during the earlier months started saying that now inflation is likely to moderate maybe by september or october now typically market reacts 3 months before uh, something it's like corporate results or whether you see corporate results whether you see announcement whether you see budget preparations of the market etc so if you uh, take september or october that is the 9th or 10th month and you minus 3 months and you're effectively talking about the 6th or 7th month which would have made it june or july also what had happened is there was excessive selling uh, unprecedented selling by fis and at some point of time the selling had to abate for multiple reasons one that uh, you know the effect of uh, inflation to the effect of crude crude had started correcting in a meaningful way commodities were correcting in a meaningful way uh, third that one of the sectors which actually has the potential to lead the market and i've been talking about that for some uh, time now which is the financial sector uh, you know the npa ratios or the npas have become relatively low even today standard and poor had put up a statement that this will be a very low npa for banks and credit cycle has to uh, uptake because what happens in adversity there is option for somebody somebody will do acquisition somebody will do capex at the cost of something else somebody will have the money to do like reliance for example was making acquisitions at the time when the sentiment was you know lower due to right covid time etc so there always be an opportunity and the fourth and the and the fourth or fifth most important point was that the correction in the mid caps and the small caps was very severe commensurate to the problem because most of this uh, most of my thought process was that this some of these problems may be a quarter or a two which also quarter two quarters would also meant a lot but the market had already discounted a large part of that by the corrections and when i'm talking about these mid and small caps i'm not talking necessarily about new age companies i was talking about very credible businesses that had corrected substantially so what happened in june as an example was that i had a screen in front of me and in the screen i would see scripts and for one second if you were to sh- switch off your mind from the market you look at the scripts and ask yourself do i have a reasonable probability that i will make 20% returns for the year end now if the answer was yes and it was a blind buy because 20% in 6 months means a 40% annualized return if the answer was not 20 but maybe 15 then also it was very supportive because the meaningful return so i made a list of scripts uh, in the mid cap and the small cap sector which i felt were very attractive and uh, from the month of june i have been uh, aggressively buying and uh, uh, i had also indicated in some of the charts that i believe that the large cap index will will underperform 
uh, compared to the mid caps, which was against the consensus view. The consensus view was large caps will do better and mid caps and small caps will do lesser. So now you've had a situation where, for example, the market has done, if the market has done four and a half to five percent on the Nifty or Sensex, the mid cap index is up some 11 or 12, 11 percent and the small cap index is up some 12, 13 percent. But on a relative basis, a lot of small caps have rallied more than 20 to 30 percent. Some of the names are shared on Twitter. So the real fun of what I was trying to tell you that at the end of the year, you're going to make your 20 percent, etc. has already happened effectively in a month. What is now happening is that the global situation is not getting worse. Because it is, it is like on a status quo. There is an impact that has happened on the gas uh, prices in Europe. As for example, you heard Germany saying that they will cut output by 15%. And I feel that uh, some of these cuts could again be an opportunity. Again, the same theory of adversity, opportunity and adversity. For example, I believe that a sector like, as an example, chemicals could see a second round of uh, a rally. Because some of these are inevitable global businesses. And the shift, which, was, which you called as China plus one, now you want to call it switch away from Europe. There are a lot of these businesses are essential to the functioning of manufacturing in Europe, etc. Uh, so there are opportunities there. In between these months in February to May, in order to safeguard ourselves, I had suggested one to be overweight on banking and I named a few stocks that I personally own. And secondly, I had told you that the MNC manufacturing theme will play very well. Uh, since the month of February to May, on actually even till now, the manufacturing, the MNC manufacturing sector has actually given returns which are positive. Uh, I don't know a single stock in that category. Some of them I own, some of them I don't own. But I don't know a single stock in that category that gave negative returns vis-a-vis -vis the market that actually fell uh, on the small caps and mid caps by about 20% and on the nifty by about 10 or 12%. So that was the strategy and the strategy now remains. And I put it up on Twitter also that I'm selling my large caps to buy small cap and mid caps and that uh, that has really worked well. So that was how I positioned myself on the market. Right. Uh, so, uh, all throughout this, did your risk management strategy also change somewhat? So, so this is risk management. No? So, what you're basically saying that there is a global turbulence. What, what happens in a global turbulence is that a company that has to export orders or a company that has to cater to orders in India but requires raw materials could get impacted. So the shift, rather than saying that I will move out of the market, because that's a very difficult decision to sort of say that I will, you know, you can say 5% of your portfolio you've reduced, 10% you've reduced. But rather than doing that and to sort of look at your portfolio, which already includes stocks that you like, one strategy of defensive for me was to MNC Pharma because MNC is cater to the world. Sorry, not pharma, MNC manufacturing. Because MNC caters to the world and I, they have technology. So I felt that if the world is in a doldrum, they will move to a low-cost producing nation. And India's labor is relatively cheaper still. And in some cases, even uh, the, uh, the, the effects of the, uh, uh, the gas, you know, things like gas and others are relatively cheaper, not petroleum. Uh, so I felt that some of those companies, guys will take a cost arbitrage and move towards India. And also because they're so deep rooted in terms of time, if they find that the facilities in India are not being used, and of course, they are already trying to move away from China, and now there are problems in Europe of manufacturing, and other than these companies will benefit because the orders are given today, but executed over a long period. Like a company gets a 1,000 crore order, it takes a time to execute, but the 1,000 crore order changes its fortunes for the next quarter and the next quarter and so on. And also because what happens is that since there are issues of transfer pricing and related party transaction, etc., these are done at arm's length. So they cannot, they cannot squeeze out the ability of the Indian company to sort of earn the kind of profit that it would have done had it been independent. So therefore, that was a risk mitigation strategy. Banking was also a risk mitigation strategy because in, it's like this. If there is, you know, if, if there is a deterioration, the deterior in the deterioration, the leader will take the opportunity. And the leaders in this particular case are guys who have capital. And the capital doesn't have an NPA effect or it has a reduced NPA effect. So it becomes good capital. Now, the only point is that where does the capital go? Does it go to industrial purpose? Does it go to consumer purpose? Or does it go into a debt restructuring? Or does it go into an NCLT restructuring, etc.? And I felt that if even if things don't improve, they will not deteriorate for the banking sector. Therefore, the emphasis on the few companies in banking. And also the price point. If you like in stock, for example, at 220 rupees and during the fall, it came down to 170 and your horizon had not changed, then why did your act of execution change? So you would have bought whatever money you had at 170 rupees to assume that it would go back, which is exactly how it is played out. So that was a risk mitigation strategy. But I didn't want to be a hero by saying that I'm going to now adventure into unknown names. And that's why I was not buying small and mid caps right from February to this thing. Or I was also not buying large caps. I wasn't buying only. 
but but when you had discovered that the problems are likely to tide over then a whole uh, ocean of opportunities uh, came up and had to then latch it on right uh, perfect sir thank you so much for sharing that sir uh, sir uh, uh, on a related note uh, you just discussed a little told us a little bit about ki if valuations if the same thing that you were bullish on at 220 170 maybe you sh- it should make sense uh, there is a related on this related note there are three investment philosophies kind of one is uh, valuation based uh, or maybe buy on dips then there is a growth uh, based philosophy and or maybe uh, you can call it uh, the uh, the companies that did not fall during the dip and the third one is just keep doing sip which one do you have a preference among any of these sir see sip is a, is relatively a no brain so the sip gives you the ability to buy more when the market is uh, down and it enables you and when the market is up you relatively buy less because of the adjustment of amount so therefore in that sense you get the benefit of buying more on dips and it has always worked because the mutual fund industry shows that if it is an sip there's a difference between an sip for example of index was is an sip of sectorial funds i'm not a believer in sip of sectorial funds but basically to buy uh, index uh, related sip or anything close to that is uh, is not uh, is, you know it always works so this, that's a no brainer now as far as buy on dips is concerned some buy on dips can also fail because it may happen that you may be at the start of a very long prolonged problem and uh, and you may ignore that because just because prices have fallen so price should not be your barometer the, the what is the problem in the world and how the problem is being addressed and whether it is being and whether it is balanced or imbalanced what is balance balance means that you basically like take a scale and you have 50 on one side and your 50 which means equal balance and then you come and say no one side of the scale has become 90 or become 95 because bank of america uh, surveys of fund managers around the world showed that the cash holding was the highest every the american market giants which were very large commendable companies were falling like there's going to be no tomorrow as if the companies the biggest companies like apple microsoft google kind of companies were going to shut down uh, all of a sudden everybody said that you know uh, 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 equity market is going to crash so what happens is that if the scale becomes 90 95% one side and everybody is negative they would have acted on the negativity which means that they would have sold they would have done something to reduce the equity exposure otherwise there is no logic of there being negative and therefore what is left is that that 5% that is on the other side is already seen the brunt of most of this behavioral signs and in that sense the opportunity comes so the fii dumping of the indian market basically means that some of our great star nifty 50 companies the kind of company they own had already corrected but at the same point of and some of it you may say was lapped up by dis but the question is that what was the fo- reason for the fall it was high crude it was high inflation it was india's relative uh, market being expensive compared to the rest of the world now you say the market is corrected so that is resolved oil is correcting so that is resolved inflation is being tackled so therefore it is a process transitory process and you come and say you know the negatives are getting addressed so that 95% negativity of uh, of the bulk of people and the fact that they were sitting on cash will somewhere get deployed i mean nobody sits on cash for very long because then the fund returns are zero Uh, the cost of ca- cash is effectively zero i mean they put it in debt funds and compared they will not be treated as equity funds so then the opportunity comes and this is the rule of markets for so many years that's why you should read books on history and all you need to learn uh, and this is not this was not a case i don't call this a case of bubble at and how even people use the word bubble how is an equity market that is based upon earnings and when you talk about price to earnings then you talk about the fact that the banking cycle in india or the credit cycle in india has not taken off capex cycle in india has not taken off for years how do you even call it a bubble what is the what is the reason that you call it a bubble so initially the, you could say there was a bubble in new age companies so it corrected and when you look at some of the other companies you come and say it's not a bubble but they have some of them may have growth problems because of raw material inflation and other reasons and they were being addressed and one of the other characteristic that i personally track was that during this time when the market corrected there was very uh, insignificant promoter selling neither were promoter selling or they, neither there were significant promoter pledges which basically meant that they were also staying put which is a healthy sign um uh, and the capital market fell which is also a very good point capital market fell means that the new ipos fell because the new ipos were causing a lot of you know frenzy for money and over subscription and gray market premiums and whatever the fact that they also fell basically meant that uh, you know the excesses of the market were getting controlled so that appeared to me as an opportunity it is worked right now but who knows from the main point is what lies ahead right perfect sir absolutely perfect uh, sir uh, so since a lot of uh, one more thing is uh, a lot of factors are being resolved right now and over the last week or so we have also seen as uh, selling initially it reduced and then now fis have again net buying has also kind of started 
but in this scenario i think although dis were active and they were picking up whatever ifis were leaving and they were kind of balancing it out and yet there was a huge still there was a huge correction of course indian market still kind of fared better than the rest of the world but there still was a good amount of correction but the moment fis come back we again see uh, kind of markets rallying back so do you have a thought on that sir see there is a theory that uh, not a theory or whatever thing that that uh, that i have started believing in long time back that the fis uh, uh, don't sell uh, it is not that the market falls when the fis sell or for, or for example the market rises when the dis buy it is that the fis sell because the market is falling so what happens is that it's like it's like you you get they their portfolio sizes are humongous because they run into billions they are not talking about even if you look at the selling of the last year it is it is a proportion of what they own in india so what happens is when the market is uh, they, they when the market is following and they see that the probability of the market deteriorating is more because for example inflation and particularly oil directly hit our companies then they realize that this cycle or the spiral is going to continue for some time so they safeguard they try and sell because they have to safeguard some part of their portfolio vis-a-vis something else which is anyway going to for it's like you also if you own a stock and you think it is good but it may fall because something has gone wrong you'll sell some part of it and then next day maybe if you're not in range you sell some part but you won't do all or nothing in one day now when the market discovers that the variables that uh, that that impact india for example oil or for example inflation or other things Uh, and also the reaction of the government for example do we make silly decisions do we make uh, considerate decisions when they become more balanced then people will say that okay the first phase is that i will start reducing my selling so it was very evident if you see that in the last few days the fi selling first started reducing from figures like 2000 crores and 2500 even 3000 4000 crores they were going they started reducing it and it became you know uh, figures like 200 300 400 crores and then all of a sudden it it, it uh, sort of started plateauing now today somebody may say that today in the cash market they were sellers but no you must see that they have done a huge amount of uh, covering up in the fndo segment because they hedge actually fndo is supposed to be an instrument of hedge it is not a different thing that traders may do whatever with it but it's really really meant to hedge so today for example if you look at the stock futures and you see the um, uh, index futures etc they did a lot of buying there and to that extent they must have they may have reduced some of their cash position just to sort of balance it but the net effect is still positive and now because the net effect is positive for this week this is the first week i think in the whole year if i'm not mistaken where it, the fi have turned buyers there will be a buoyancy in sentiment so it's again a spiral the fi will buy today di is bought what caused the di is to buy today and not buy yesterday or day before is something that you can deliberate on the trader community comes in because now they feel that the top levels what they call is higher tops higher this whatever xyz they come in then what happens is somebody who's conservative feels that oh i missed the rally in the market of uh, so many points because the last one week rally was very good then somebody reads a fear tweets and he says oh why is he coming and talking about 30% returns for the month of one stock of 15 or per day 30% returns i'm missing out let me quickly pick up a list and buy what i missed out because i don't want the you know the feeling of fomo so there are so so many spiral effects then somebody will come and say that you know it's very strange that now standard and poor says that the banking sector will do well it's very strange today i put up a statement of a very large us fund that says that no they're going to increase their allocation in india after next week you will discover that all the fis were written negative of india say that we are removing the coverage and also see that is the psychology this is what i'm trying to teach people that when all the negatives go to in one direction it can be that the direction can prolong the time because after all they may have a view but it is also possible that because there are too many negatives things will turn around like for example the everybody said we are negative on the it sector everybody all the foreign institution downgraded the sector and then last week it stocks if you look at some of the it stocks uh, they all they rally 10 10% for the week which is not a small rally i mean because you will be buying at those levels so that uh, i for example on my own uh, i have not been bullish on consumer the market doesn't care now the market took up the consumer stocks because somebody came out and said unilever came out with great results so they said okay fair enough now we will remark the sector and then the it went up for whatever reasons uh, so you have to take into account and when there is always going to be excesses on any side whether bullish or bearish there will be excesses will always be corrected and that is why market reverts to mean and uh, you have to be opportunist to find an op- to find good scripts now if i as an example if i find that uh, i'm just giving you a random example if tcs has fallen to 2950 and you don't like it and this happened to me on twitter 
when i was saying that large it should be bought the same guys were coming and saying no tcs will now go to 2800 it will go to 2700 are tcs is not a company that's going to ask you where it's going the day somebody find that there is value in it don't forget one month back they done a buyback at 4000 rupees so that time when that time tcs management said that we are getting such big orders that we cannot handle it then when the results come out they say that only two orders of 400 million now we are not getting a billion dollar order so why because the managements are also humans and all humans tend to get you know on extremes you get into a, you always believe that you know it's either going to be one side of the pendulum uh, pendulum or one or the other other side but in reality you have to be more rational and say it doesn't work like this so you have to balance yourself now whether you bought it or whether you bought consumer or you bought small small caps or you bought like for example infrastructure sector now every, everybody knows that infrastructure sector has destroyed a lot of value but you are not being right because what is happening is this government is hell bent on infrastructure they have demonstrated it as with the road projects they demonstrated it the airport project the infrastructure companies are not coming and saying they have not paid us because now they have such a buoyant gst collection that they are they are themselves saying that we go, we are collecting more even the even the tax that they imposed on reliance and others they said is meant for infrastructure and all of a sudden you'll come and say but infrastructure company and they're getting orders the infrastructure book order books are books so then you'll come and say but now after two quarters we missed it and they all dub who we have to understand no what where should we be positioned it's like the you know i'm not a golfer but the way the golf guy balances his body before he strikes it's the balancing of the body that causes the ball to reach the ultimate hole like uh perfect sir absolutely great thank you so much for sharing that sir uh sir i have a lot of questions from audience and one of the very a uh, question that keeps on repeating for you especially is so like in the beginning of the space as well i said you are a man of many talents and you do so many things so one question that keeps repeating uh, suresh chaudhary sir has asked uh, how do you read so much and what exactly do you read in your with your morning tab biscuits uh, ravi sir had asked ki uh how did you how do you find your gems and uh, another tight question which is how which newspaper do you read and uh, then another question was uh, shrikant by shrikant sir he asked how do you read so many things how you remember so many things so i think there is a connection between all of this which we all want to learn from you sir yeah surely i'll answer that you know but one feedback that i wanted to give to you uh, was that for example the last one or two session that you did of with other speakers i had joined in uh and i felt and you and your your sessions are very centric around the speaker so sometimes what happens is that you overlook the importance of some of the other people who have joined like for example i am talking to you i find that uh, deepak has joined he is very very good with stocks devina has joined devina has a very good knack of the global market after she runs for us global so sometimes you know while i will talk and give an answer sometimes we should encourage these people because it's not easy to grab you know the best of brains and you must give due credit to them because they can bring a perspective which will add to the perspective or maybe actually even better the perspective of your speaker and therefore make it more holistic and it's it's a great opportunity and that's the advantage of having forums now as far as reading is concerned see every single person it's like this let me turn a disbeliever into reading and then i interact with anybody whether it is a, a successful entrepreneur it is in a successful investor or an economist or anybody else reading is something that will open many dimensions to you uh what will happen is that uh, you will find you pick up a good book and you f- you finish the book and by the time you are going through the book and finishing it ideas are already coming in your mind uh and ideas that you believed in some of the things that may be wrong in your mind are getting sort of washed away because sometimes you just read away it's like a balancing act so it is a great opportunity for people to read now i the reason why i read newspapers was long time back in the legal profession itself one of the most accomplished lawyers of india mr kapil sibbal said uh, that you know he does not read so much of case law as opposed to newspapers because this is the newspapers contain all the legal developments because case law you can research it's already there it's out but the newspapers are telling you the future of where the case has not been written and why is it there because their policy is there the policies have plus and minuses somebody will have a dissent on a policy which is also good because the dissent is also important and it will have a important role to play in where disagreements will come in uh, you will read about international news you will read about trends you will read about business collapses uh, so many things are in the newspaper uh, its newspapers are not just about reading the sports page and about what the film stars are doing and the x y z it's all about the fun of reading uh, you know some of these important things sometime there'll be statements the numbers of uh, of for example the economy will come and somebody will say but these are actually good <clears throat> and you will say why are they good but they look very bad or in results i mean it happens so frequently result comes they'll say company's profit is down 60% like they, yesterday sears profit was down 60% and they said the stock will tank the stock uh, you know closed uh, at days high 
so you will find opportunities uh, because somebody will now start analyzing and saying is the worst in the raw material or is it going to deteriorate uh, uh, many such examples of uh, things so that's why reading is something that you do and then you know i i always say this that anybody who shares his list of books with you or shares his articles with you is one of your best uh, advisors because what he's trying to do is to make you a better thinker and a better thinker will make mistakes we will all make mistakes we are all humans but we will learn from some of these mistakes and when we learn from some of these mistakes we will refine processes and that is what is mental the art of mental modeling and then you will become disciplined like suppose i don't know of a stock and say deepak or devina or somebody are very bullish about it, very bullish so what will i do i'll say i'll take a 1% exposure rather than taking more i'm just giving you a random example and then over a period of time you will understand why they were right and if they are right and you'll understand what was it that i thought that was wrong and that's that itself is the biggest because market will give you too many opportunities but to capture those opportunities you need to have your basic learning right otherwise you will if you just keep standing and saying that this is doing well and that is doing well and let me latch on or similarly if you emulate people's portfolio then you keep buying so many people uh, uh, you know i was just had a meeting with the top editor of a, of a newspaper and i was telling him that if you look at it see mr junjunwala got three or four very uh, things really right for example a titan or a crystal or something but he got so many things wrong yet what happened is that the three that were right or four that were right he kept building upon convictions so for example sometimes you're buying on the tops or sometimes and what went wrong if was one person portfolio uh, you know uh, in a particular company went wrong and it even went to zero then how did it matter which is also what the book one one uh, one to 100 or whatever the name telling you that if you get one stock that becomes a 100 bagger and you have 99 stocks that don't perform still your portfolio is not going to be negative because then one guy is already given you 100% returns but the probability of 99 failures is is your problem and you have to ensure that you don't have 99 failures and if you bring the 99 failure number down then you are portfolio would have done relatively better to the market which is where your attention span should be right right absolutely sir thank you so much for that uh, sir uh, i as you said i already uh, requested some of the uh, names you took you i sent the sticker request and you're absolutely right in that that uh, i mean they are really great and really difficult to hold get a hold of uh, uh, i have sent them a request and we have a lot of meanwhile uh, we have a lot more questions for you as well so i'll i'm hoping they'll join in uh, and i've also invited and you have graciously accepted to be a co-host so you also have a few full view you can invite anybody and we can have a broader discussion as well uh so uh, sir i have a lot of questions that pinned a tweet in this and uh, we are getting a lot of questions i'll try to avoid stock specific questions and try to keep it more focused on a broader learning perspective uh, but uh, yeah so one the question is uh, by bhavya sir and he has asked favorite books on investing from you no see there is a difference between books also see because times change so uh, for example i did not if i did not know thalo some years back then today i may think that you is a good thinker for example i may like fooled by randomness by nasim talib but i may today find that you know some of the new books that came were not so pertinent uh, uh, people's ideology seen i could be a good thinker at some point of time then i may have made a judgment error or maybe i live in a country where some turmoil happened and therefore my the situation around me changes so what happens is you have to have, you have to be you, and then you and there may be new authors that you come across who use books you don't know but then you after some time they become best seller so you have to read on a variety of subjects for example Uh, if professor jeremy siegel talks about the fact that stocks are for the long run then somebody else may also talk about the fact that the returns of from a stock cannot be in many cases cannot be infinite and good companies self disrupt somebody may talk about the fact that there has to be a difference between value uh, where, uh, versus growth so the books on value versus books on growth are very different that is why you saw that the it companies and other places while they were growth companies they corrected and again a lot of value emerged at some point of time you may not like metals because they may you may call them a commodity and this is immediately after a metal bull run a metal prices fall too much then you will come and say you know what now i like them because now with that price there is not only value but there will also be growth because inevitably at some point of time there will be consumption so you have to keep reading different kind of books now as far as my favorite books are concerned i like i like books on behavioral science simply because the books on behavioral science pick up a lot of anecdotes and examples to help you think better and it is it i find that that if i'm able to think 
uh, in a better way then it enables me to take hopefully take better decisions uh, whereas for example i don't i like to pick up a book like if i find a book in the market that says and this happened more in america and less in india they say a hundred best ideas to buy for 2025 then what are you talking about i mean that doesn't happen like this no if it was so easy uh, and then you also have to read a lot on uh, 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 for example what the competitors say it's not about just the company and its annual report it's what the competitors say now if a competitor is talking about the same set of problems that are temporarily in nature for example raw material or something then you have to see who is going to be the leader to emerge in order to tackle because if you say that the company is not a leader then you cannot say the management is so differentiated but you can't at the same time look at an award that is given by a business magazine and say that these are the best companies for the year because if you see a lot of these companies that make it to best companies of the year are not necessarily wealth creators so reading is not something which is limited in fact you know somebody once gave me a very good advice they asked me what kind of uh, books in or in that particular case what kind of magazine do you read so i said i for example read sports magazines i read business magazines so they said why read magazines on interiors so i said it's not my subject okay why don't you read ma- magazine on health i said it's not my subject so they said do you not understand that if you pick up these magazines and start reading it you will become a better thinker and i at the end of the day said it's so logical if i read about health you, you know and i'm able to improve my body and my mind and my sleep skills and many other things and i start understanding the human body some of the professor bakshi and others have shared and i uh, you know some very good books that are to do with health also and other people also then you start thinking yeah you know i'm becoming a more holistic person because then i'm going to be able to control i remember that once you know i today paid a wrote a, a, a letter or whatever tweet for prashant jain i think the first thing that impressed me about prashant jain was that whatever happened he brought meditation into it and i used to think yeah this is very cool i can't do it so let me learn from him in that sense so you should read on a variety of subjects and uh, you know that 100 and 200 and 300 rupees that you send on a book which is not even the cost of one meal that you order from outside that learning remains with you in perpetuity so uh, or uh, for a long period of time if not in perpetuity so pay a lot of importance to books right absolutely that's that's brilliantly put sir thank you so much for sharing those insights with us and i couldn't agree more like you have to have a holistic view in life and in general to be able to cope up with it just one focus would just not lead to it absolutely brilliant See, the other thing also that happens is that when you read over a period of time then you understand that this has happened before and this is how it came out because for example there are economic this you know economic depressions in the world there are peculiar problems that happen in company the peculiar problem that happen on legal compliance there are peculiar problem that happen for example suppose there is a headline news and this is actually happened a few years back that hindustan lever settles the case because they forgot to report something to the exchange then you are able to differentiate between the liability of hindustan lever directors in not disclosing some you know buying and selling of 800 shares that was overlooked by some mistake vis-a-vis an issue where they have done some illegal activity and profited so you realize that there is a divine line now suppose the headline comes that hindustan lever has settled a dispute because suppose they say they settled a dispute with sebi and that is the market takes a stock down 5% and you look at the market cap of hindustan lever and say do you think this is something that was so atrocious in nature for the market to behave in this way or is it genuinely a human error you can do a lot of dividing lines like this and over a period of time your mind when it reads 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 gets into a compartment of at least trying to understand what is the difference between a a gross problem a gross problem and for example a temporary problem also management like for example if tcs management told you that we are we are getting too many orders which happened when they were doing buyback and then all of a sudden now they have come and said that we only got two orders was 400 million and the large ticket orders are not coming do you actually feel that the management is deteriorated no it's just an environment so therefore you are able to differentiate that another guy who doesn't read and only reads the headline and that day sees that tcs says no big orders and only two orders of 400 million will write off the company right perfect basically you are able to read between the lines when you read it's like a habit na you know the, uh, yeah. the biggest example of this uh, happens to be on the uh, television serials front if you are watching the serial and you miss a few minutes because you got up to take a call or you went out to the kitchen to make something you don't really miss much but if the movie is only 2 hours and then you've left between something in between then it's got very little your attention that's why you know hindi movie mein aap kabhi bhi aaj aapko kahani samajh mein aa jati hai but in an english film which is very engrossing the 10 minute of loss because it's only a 2 hour film can really become more fatal for you absolutely brilliantly put sir <laughs> okay so uh, all right so i've got a lot things okay this is an interesting question sir Ch- uh, charanjeev sir has asked uh, which sectors do you find undervalued currently in addition to banking 
No, but why the why the question on sector? See, why not the question on companies? Because what is yeah. how do I how do you ascribe a sector to be undervalued? At least, see, there are certain people who are masters at data crunching. Hmm. They will be able to put forward a lot of data. For example, sometimes even I go on Twitter and ask some of these people to share data because they will pull out that data. You know, matter of few minutes, and they've got all these databases. They are tracking data not only for India but also compared to the rest of the world, etc. And they will be far more competent than me to answer this question. Uh, so when i don't have the competence to get into certain things because of say skill sets i ask myself what do i skill set do i have so you take a sector you can take the most plague sector which basically means a sector which is not doing too well now the leader in that sector may still do very well now i just gave an example that you know the last few days there were so many negative articles to do with the ceramic industry and how it is into a completely glut situation this and that and kajaria was being downgraded left right and center the downgrades were happening at a price of 900 in one month's time the stock price is 1135 so for you the question was that was that is kajaria a good company just keep your question simple is kajaria a good company does it still make good products is the management changing is it, as in is the deterioration of the decision making powers is the market getting to uh, to avoid, you know is it getting to uh, to fixated by a, a problem which may be temporary or is it a long term deterioration for example is it obsolescence uh, what is sarah saying about this and then you actually track it and you come and say you know this is an easier way because i'm it's like i'm only talking to my own soul to get the answers and then you come and say okay at the end of it either i've got a certain answer which means that it is a great company at a great price or i've got an answer that it is a great company but i'm not sure about the price because i don't know the behavior of the market and i still don't know the behavior of the large players who may be holding it and selling it if you don't know if you if you know for certain it's like known knowns known unknowns if you know for certain then you buy it if you don't know for certain then you buy a little bit and then you put your thesis on in your own diary and say i i will look at these thesis to see so i don't find that there is reason even if you've taken a one exposure in the company that one percent exposure in the company can turn out to create a lot of wealth because it will give you the opportunity to keep increasing when your conviction keeps going up but if you don't enter it you remove it from your mind now you've removed it from your mind means you're not tracking it so if it was a great opportunity and you removed it in your mind because you had too much of negativity around yourself for whatever reason sector reason company reason or whatever reason or result one result reason then it becomes even more difficult to convince a mind which is already decided you like why are you you going to fight in your own brain with your own self right absolutely sir thank you so much for that sir uh, okay next question sir eklavya sir ka hai and he has asked uh, do you categorize your stocks in your the stocks in your portfolio as long term and short term investments and second in the last day how has your evolution been uh, been as an investor so see i obviously when you buy a stock you will buy a stock with the assumption that it will do very well and if the assumption and very well is very relative very well is very relative compared to the market for example if the market goes up 10% and your stock is doing say 12% and it is doing well if your result expectation of the sector is x and your company is delivering better than that it is well if your result expectation or if your expectation for a company is a but the company is diversifying to do some bigger things because they are trying to evolve for the next level uh, and therefore they are redoing their entire company like an ibm did when it moved away from hardware to other things then it is or an uh, apple did uh, when the, initially apple's uh, founder was, was not interested in launching the iphone but uh, they decided everything would have been mac for them but then today a substantial part of the revenue is only iphone uh, or for example it, so you have to take a call based upon that and have to uh, look at it and then if the if the company is doing well then there is no reason that you will not be a long term investor but just because you bought a stock that had done well historically and all of a sudden as the, you know uh, 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 for example it is falling and you want to overlook that fall without trying to see that is there a change for example say say for example a company that is in cars and it is faces a threat of ev for some reasons and you don't know that which company in ev is going to emerge is it going to be an existing company or it is going to be players or it is going to be players from the unlisted segment for example like suppose a toyota or a hyundai in india they may be listed outside but i'm giving an example from india then uh, just because it has historical returns and you want to own it and you just look at some 52 week high number and you say that because it was 7000 rupees and now it is 6000 or 5000 and therefore it will go to 7000 that is called a blind spot you are basically ignoring the change uh, and that doesn't work so you have to uh, analyze it from the, like it's that's what i say about consumer companies See, consumer companies have already squeezed out efficiencies to the maximum extent 
so they are only going to be able to play a limited game of F- they may be temporarily uh, you know mismatched like for example as you saw in itc's case and why it was re-rated because there were allocation issues and between the tobacco and the non tobacco business but in some of the other places the efficiency matrix is played out so well that you you will only be betting upon the fact that if all of a sudden it can't be that i'll eat 10 packets of biscuit if i was eating one no you will, the fact that i will move from a level 1 biscuit through a level 2 biscuit to level 3 biscuit is is not something that is so rocket science to basically think that you're going to make spectacular returns so you have to look at what is the trigger and that is why i like companies that say we are reinventing ourselves when they reinvent themselves they basically are trying to develop new models some of them are transiting very well some of them are in, some of them give up good businesses also to go into the next level some new businesses keep emerging you also have to track a lot of new businesses there are a lot of stars that emerge that we don't look at just because we're so enamored by the existing stars right absolutely sir thank you so much for that sir it's it's a it's a related question and partially i think i i can kind of understand the answer already but i would love to have a more clarity on it uh, so uh, the question is uh, how to decide when to sell like at so for instance if you have you have invested like you said key to because you believe that the company is going to do well but then it falls 25 to 30 maybe it falls 25 to 30% and uh, uh then do you uh, maybe looking at that loss do you maybe re-strategize and second is so one is exiting when company is making a loss so maybe looking at its factors and second is exiting at once you have got 25 to 30% profit so do you book what you have got or do you re- still keep looking ki is there more potential to grow how do you decide on that sir no first of all the decision to buy and sell should not be fixated only on single price movement because don't forget you're talking about 20 25% but with the sort of uh, rules that we have in the exchange of you know 20% circuits there may be a situation where and this is this happens so frequently also you may find that one particular day let's assume that somebody basically has a, re- a redemption and he owns a substantial part of a particular company and he finds that that particular day is going to dump that particular company because he has redemption not that he wants to redeem but somebody has put pressure on him i'm just giving you one example so he decides to sell and that day there is no buyer in that counter and it's down 20% so the question you should not ask is that the 20% is is it is it really causing me to get a sleepless night the question you should ask is is the value getting more attractive because that is what you are chasing in a stock now when a stock goes up 25% i am actually encouraged to think that is my thesis on the stock working and if my thesis on the stock is working and the margin for of safety for that company is going up because of either the quality of earnings or because of the the success of a product that was about to launch or the management has recast capital in a way to make the allocation better or for example there was a risk of of going into an international uh, jurisdiction where you felt that they will take on too much of debt which they have not taken on and therefore they have not uh, sort of risked the balance sheet then then uh, then you will have two decision either you will say stay put which is a very smart decision if if it's working it should work longer or if you are convinced that no it is actually working out to be better and the risk are getting eliminated because of the factors then you will increase your position actually top top up is not a bad idea at all in fact it is what i'm telling you that's why i say that a 1% allocation over a period of time will go up by the stock going up and second will go up by the conviction going up so so it's not a bad idea at all so there is no hard and fast rules that a stock price movement up and down i mean sometimes the movements can also be because of irrational behavior i'll just give an example right now suppose there is a news overnight that there is the problem of russia and uh, and ukraine has been resolved and uh, let's assume tomorrow was a working day and the market opened and the your stocks are up 20% now do you think that this is going to last for too long or that particular day would you like to take some action off but the, that day the stocks will be limit up and then some and it's not as if limit up selling will not happen some people will be selling at limit up because they will know so they will not wait to think that next because it is limit up next day it has to be limit up they will be smart enough to in cash and they'll say never mind we will wait because at some point of time this this 20% euphoria will get corrected and you will see that on days there are days in our market history when it has fallen very sharply and there are days also when the market has been frozen it's not that on the on that it's not as if the market doesn't correct that sense of direction does not correct it does correct in fact there are very interesting days when you know in the market you will find a script is limit up or limit down there is a very dark buy or sell order so the next day it doesn't move if the stock was limit down it opens up and sometime when it is a limit up it opens down but why are you fixated on that day's movement you should be asking yourself what has changed in the business and am i getting a adequate amount of uh, uh, you know risk coverage and safety for that absolutely absolutely so thank you so much for uh, sharing so I, like i'll give you another example today yeah. suppose the company says i've called a board meeting and i'm announcing a dividend of 200 rupees per share 
and the next day the stock price moves up by 100 rupees now i'm asking you a basic question do you think that you should buy that stock because there's a arbitrage of 100 rupees this is the announcement and the stock price move or should you be selling the stock so you will ask you will say that where is the 200 rupee coming from are they capitalizing the reserves or is it that the cash flows have improved or they have backed a very sizable order and therefore they have confidence so your your rationality of the decision is not going to be based upon a mere number no right right that's what i'm trying to tell you that don't be fixated by the number called price be yeah. fixated by the value yeah absolutely absolutely sir thank you so much for that uh okay uh so another question is uh, this is an interesting question i kind of want to extend this the question originally was uh, are there some companies which can benefit from global warming and heat waves like in europe so i kind of want to extend it further so one the question was in context of maybe ac companies or something like that the, the, there was a follow up on that but i also want to extend it to maybe rural sector and uh, the green uh, companies do you see their future in india with the pace they are growing and if so at what time horizon no see there is a there is there are always sector headwinds that come in for example if you say that there is global warming i'm just giving you one example and therefore the air conditioning companies should benefit let's take a proposition that we say there is global warming air conditioning companies should benefit so on the other hand you will also look at the air conditioning companies and see that the air conditioning companies do they use gases that are environmental friendly or not because if for example the gas that goes into an air conditioner if it is not environmental friendly then it will it can neutralize the effect because then you will look at alternate solutions and that alternate solution may come in from new inventions and renovations and other things for example there were no split air conditioners and if a company was at at one point of time and if a company at that time was only making window acs or wall mounted acs then it was going to face a threat because aesthetics was a threat there so like this you have to evaluate uh, uh, what is going to happen if for example if this global warming and all the nations get together and they put things on uh, recycling of the environment and they put things on you know the toxic waste waste that goes into oceans and others and by that time are able to resolve some part of the global warming then all of a sudden you won't say that these companies that i bought and who have now built up these inventories huge amount of inventories will sell by the same logic you will not say because there is global warming i will buy a refrigerator company and put my head in front of the refrigerator when i feel warm because it has even a faster instant relief because you know things will change of that side right so it's not it's not such an easy call uh, to take what you have to basically take the call like for example in air conditioners only if my call is that electricity supply is not uh, is improving and therefore india is not a deficit country and there is a likelihood that some of the benefits of this electricity will now percolate to you know smaller towns and to sm- to smaller cities and then finally to rural india the real question to ask is that is it likely that some of these guys will put air conditioners and if you find that the initially you can't take a call because taking a call means you have become a market survey agency but you go to these places and say yes they are putting air conditioners why they putting it so the answer be prestige the answer could be differentiating themselves with the their the neighbors the answer could be because they in the house they got somebody got married who was exposed to urban india and he now feels the need to which which is what i wrote when i wrote about the, the sanitation and i wrote why example bathrooms have to come up i mean it is a human requirement and how you are not going to make bathrooms they were so then you start analyzing this and then somebody will come and tell you that you know while you are thinking of all this there is actually innovation happening the if you see the price of aircraft are not going up it is the price of air conditioner gone up commensurate to what has happened all around the world even look at your cinema tickets or anything else has gone up so the question is going to be will the margins go up or will it just be a volume play so you there are lot of variables that you have to put into your mind and in order to take a decision and then you will also find that as happened with air conditioning companies particularly it happened in voltas like in voltas case at one point of time they had a lot of exposure to the middle east and that time the petro dollar collapse came so then they were stranded with project or so somebody is dependent on the mall and all of a sudden the real estate sector collapses and then they do orders and what do they do so it has to be an evaluation not the green companies are concerned it's a good theme because the world is concerned about environment but the question is that how do you decide which company in the theme is going to do well is it going to be wind energy is it going to be solar energy it is going to be hydro energy it is going to be xyz so when you are not very sure what you do is it's safer to buy a basket because that ba- you you don't want a suzlon kind of situation also in your portfolio right right absolutely sir uh brilliant thank you so much for sharing uh, your insights on both these aspects sir uh sir uh, next question is by breakout chat sir he's often a guest on our podcast as well and uh, he uh, has asked how much percent of your capital you can risk in a particular trade or in no first of all my question is that why am i calling it a risk because the answer to this question depends upon 
the presumption of where the risk came from is the risk of getting no return is it a risk of getting sub sub market return is a risk of blow up of capital they're all different kind of risk they can be after all don't forget that people were making a mockery out of itc and making memes every single day and they've gone quite a no when I, itc ended up being the big return so was it a risk of not owning everything but you were subject to a social risk that you would have come on a social media platform and say i own itc and people would have made memes on you i'm just giving you a side of human psychology so the risk is relative is it a risk of uh, liquidity because you may discover that you own a stock where today it is difficult to buy but it will become even difficult to sell so if you when you need money if it becomes difficult to sell then what happens you still need the money so some you tell your broker niche karke bech do so what is the risk that you are analyzing once you have analyzed the risk or you thought of the risk then it is to see whether it is a risk or not now for example i'll give an example say your portfolio is worth x and the market has a drawdown like it had in say from actually october of last year or november of last year it had a drawdown so your x becomes less by 8% so it becomes suppose it was 10 rupees it becomes 8 rupees now are you going to basically get into the fear of selling all your shares or will you ask yourself no actually the problem is genuine today there is no doubt that there is a problem with russia ukraine there are problem with china there is a problem with uh, so in all the fronts of inflation raw material logistics but but the problem is not likely to subsist after 2 years i'm just giving you a random figure 2 years i could have said different months also but say 2 years so in 2 years things will get sorted out then these will will these be the leading companies then also the answer if the answer is yes will i be able to buy it exactly after 2 years at the same price the answer is no because the market is forward thinking so big money or somebody will come in acquire it before that so if my do i need that money today that in 2 years if it doesn't move will it will it impact my standard of living and the things that i have to do like look after education other reason the answer is no then how is it a loss then it is only an opportunity so you have to put position risk from the from your perspective and one man's risk is not another man's risk one man risk is another man's opportunity right absolutely sir absolutely thank you so much for that uh, sir next i had uh, like seven eight questions all of them around sectors so uh, they overlap and the four sectors that uh, people have generally asked about is energy oil marketing specialty chemicals and battery so if you have any uh, views on any of these sectors sir yes see so the easiest one is specialty chemicals because i personally believe and please uh, uh, underline that i could be wrong because if i was right then you know if i was always right then world would be so different but i see this that specialty chemicals is going to enter into another round of a bull market and i i just articulated my reasons for it i feel that right now you had the benefit of china you will also have the benefit of 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 uh, of uh, europe Uh, germany has some very good companies in the chemical space and this r- recent requirement to actually reduce their production by 15% actually the gas production by 15% could uh, first of all shift some business to india and also don't forget that some of the companies in europe have subsidiaries in india into the same business so in that sense also it's not necessary that you only benefit in the listed companies but if the listed company makes something which is very essential uh then it will uh, sort of you know because see there are certain parts like for example food chemicals are used in food now you won't say that because there is slow down in the world the food consumption will slow down there'll just be a shift of consumption pattern and certain businesses will remain inevitable so i see and also some of the chemical companies in india are only at the starting point because their innovation is very new some of them are still undergoing capex some of them are still setting up plants so they are not catering they are they're not talking about the market in 2023 they are talking about a fairly long run so if you look at it from that perspective the movement itself from generic to to speciality is itself a big re-rating and some of it has played out whereas but in, so when it is played out you have to come and say what is the next trigger that is left for the company is it that they are still have innovations in their pipeline or is it going to be uh, you know impacted in some way etc etc when there are monopoly businesses you have to think will the monopoly sustain or is the monopoly being threatened because somebody else is now at an advanced stage of you know sort of development of something where it comes to products like batteries i would not even touch it because it is beyond my assumption to think that just because there were two companies in india that were listed those two companies are going to crack back is no actually the battery cracking may happen from a third and fourth and fifth and seventh player that you haven't even heard of because newer companies new some startup may be doing something on the battery front and will capture the market when it gets listed you can evaluate it but today it is difficult to take that uh, so that is on the battery and what was the third and fourth sector uh energy so was, yes, now what energy. do you, what do you call as energy that is also very relative because energy itself is a various are you calling it power are you calling it what is are you calling it energy right so i think energy is uh, power stocks would mostly 
qualifies energy in this case so i, I can give you two sides see power stocks historically have had misuse they've had lot of leakages Uh, they have had uh, issues relating to states not paying them due. There are a lot of due. This comes have a uh, pa- the power comes have a lot of uh, you know dues from the state. So some of the po- on the positive side you can say some of these will get resolved. On the negative side, they are very bad allocators of capital, and the the history of the power companies in the international markets. You know, General Electric was the biggest example of a power company. So the history of the power companies in the international market is not so conducive. for you to believe that they will be consistent wealth creators at least i don't believe that now as far as omcs the last is omcs yes sir i will never touch it because it is in the very nature that when they make profits you tax them and and then you impose upon them the burden of other things because to at a collective level at a nation level you say that now you're making too much of profit so i will tax you and take it away in some form of the other so if they're doing well you squeeze out the dividend so you don't leave capital with them to grow and if they are if they are in the problem then you let them be in the problem and if the nation gets into some slow down suppose there is a deficit tax collection then what will happen you immediately say no i am going going to squeeze it out of you if the market goes up uh, then you immediately announce a divestment and in that process you offer a discount to the public and you make it cheaper for the public so on the announcement itself the stock corrects so why would you like to op- and then you have a, a risk of what will happen to oil of course it is not get risk but what will happen to oil in general no so i won't touch them right absolutely sir uh, sir next question there is one more question on, on one the which is quite thing is it because they had a huge rally huge run for quite a long time and now they are kind of taking a breather but then with rupee falling and uh, the same time us is increasing so that is still its fed rate is still being increased that is still a concern but in general what is your view on it sector it's very simple let's forget about whether i have a view right wrong anything it's a very simple trend you have seen 10 years 15 years of growth of the it sector why are you even asking this question it is not possible the it by its nature is a beautiful transitory uh, business it's like a machine that transforms itself the problem t- today you may be addressing digital you may be addressing cloud you tomorrow you will address the, this entire web 3.0 then you will say that now we are getting into a meta world and we will recreate meta requirements and therefore there will be a lot of rec- uh, creation of it uh, related to that then somebody will come and say it is a see it is a me- me- measurement of efficiency and whether it is in the form of an erp or a sap or something of the other so the beauty of the thing is that these companies are able to regulate and move from one thing to the other don't forget that the players have still been the same which there are new players that keep emerging but the players have just been the same substantially so the very fact that the sector has grown one the very fact that the sector has been able to accommodate new companies and yet grown to the fact that the operating profit margins of many of these players continue to be very high three the fact that they have been able to modify the business models from time to time and therefore been more versatile or sustainable or whatever you call it for itself is an answer to you i don't see any any possibility tomorrow when you talk about say at some point of time you will say blockchain the second at some point of time you will bring in uh, artificial intelligence in a much more meaningful way in some point of time today you may be saying that you know if you look at the uh, entire technology on this uh, you know, this uh, uh, detection what's it called the qr codes T- today what is the level of acceptance of qr codes versus where it will be i mean you cannot have a system where you started tapping your credit card but you will not take it to a level which and level you will not bring it to a level when it comes to so many forms of util- utilization of qr so technology is inbuilt in there is there cannot be any other progression except for technology so i i am least worried about the fact see when the price is also correct who are these people who tell you that it has become overvalued who are these people who come and tell you the same people who told you to buy it at higher valuations and the same people you give, give uh, let the it stocks go up another 10% you'll get all the upgrades will come back so don't get so uh, uh, fixated because you know don't yeah. forget they, they're also moving in the see they have to do, people who write research reports as an example i'm talking about uh, i'm not talking about sustainable people who believe in fund management like fund managers because fund managers don't write reports the others have to keep doing something or the other no unka entertainment hai wo बिल्कुल एब्सोल्युटली एब्सोल्युटली सर ब्रिलियंटली बट द डिफिकल्टी इज नॉट दिस द डिफिकल्टी इज टीसीएस और इंफोसिस और विप्रो और एचसीएल और और इंद्रा और माइंट्री और एटसेट्रा सो व्हेन देयर इज डिफिकल्टी देन व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट यू बेस एंड यू नो आई डोंट बिलीव दैट ए कंपनी वन कंपनी कैन हैव ओनली वन नीच बिकॉज़ दैट वन नीच बेसिकली मेक्स इट इट्स लाइक कंपनी हैज ओनली वन क्लाइंट एंड इट बिकम्स ओवर डिपेंडेंट ऑन दैट क्लाइंट सो व्हाट यू डू अगेन यू हैव टू मेक अ बास्केट नाउ इफ यू ओन द बास्केट ऑफ आईटी 
in this particular time also if you owned a basket of it in your stocks corrected yes at a portfolio level you saw an erosion but then what happened then all of a sudden they, some of them went up 10 10% yes bilkul sir absolutely yeah sir uh, i am getting a lot of questions there are a, quite a few questions but of course you are the batsman batting aap kar rahe ho so and every all good things come to an end we have already taken so much of your time and uh, i am uh, i don't want to uh, like chase you away by asking so much so many questions so one maybe that, but i i have no problem in answering question because i also value the time of the people who are participating yeah. if a guy is sitting and ask waiting for a question at say 10 o'clock at night it's not about me it's also about him so why not give him that time absolutely sir that's so nice of you sir okay so i'll keep uh, asking a few more questions uh, sir next is uh, brijesh doshi sir ka question uh, in the next future digitalization index is coming please suggest the future of brightcom group company is asked so it's slightly stock yeah, specific i i will not answer that question because my views on that stock are very well known and i do not wish to participate in uh, buying things that have nothing backed in terms of uh, ratios or returns or anything Right. Oh, sure, sir. Okay. Uh, so, P. Uh, P. S. Sir, it asked about risk management in investing that we kind of touched upon in the space already. Uh, Chirag Almani, sir, has asked about uh, graphite sector. No, again, such a difficult thing to take. See, you know what is it's like asking me if you tell me what is the chances of IT? I've answered you. Now you tell yeah. me what is the chances of a nut and bolt company? <laughs> it becomes so difficult to know what is going to happen to a nut and bolt company because there has to be a certain level of specialization. See, yeah. some of these companies, the it is more like a commodity business. Hmm. If you ask me, is the steel sector likely to bounce back? My answer will be yes because you hmm. ask me why. I'll say at some point of time, what will happen is it is so uh, uh, intrinsic to production. and yeah. that uh, somewhere around the world whether it is infrastructure or it is uh, construction or it is uh, you know even utensils and other things it will come back but you yeah. ask me now ask me specifically about say a company that is only dealing with and if you say a company is dealing with a process say to do with metallurgy or something or something then i'll say you know again it has a chance yeah. or a refactory or something but graphite uh, and uh, uh, graphite and electrodes and all are not in my at least not in my you have to ask about technical person on that right absolutely absolutely so thank you so much uh, okay uh, abhishek rathor sir had asked about how do you manage your time very well <laughs> all right uh, next sir bhavya sir ka question is uh, there were two questions one is buying and risk criteria which we kind of covered second is idea generation process which i find very interesting so how do you generate ideas for investing that just to be fair to the first guy who said about time management see i have that whatever i find is useless i don't waste my time on it so like for example some of you people who have interacted with me on twitter sometimes you know i get so much of love and affection from all of you but sometimes some of you will also wonder that why have i got nasty with somebody and blocked him because i have eliminated my time i have eliminated the possibility of wasting time on somebody if for example today i put up a news on a fund which has made which has made substantial billions of dollars of investment in india and they say that we are turning more bullish and we can't understand why the fi is going away and they'll be back and one guy has tweeted and said false news and i i had to give him a google shot to say it is covered in economic time business standard business line this and that then don't waste time on such people because he doesn't even himself know why it's false news he's not even spend one minute to google he's just come to draw attention of your time uh, and uh, you know uh, sort of just because somebody has to notice him then you remove uh, such you remove it means either you block him or you mute him or you just ignore him and therefore concentrate on what is purposeful now like reading is purposeful i feel incomplete if i don't read a paper i enjoy my cup of tea in the mornings and evening i make sure that i enjoy it and because it's a part of the life that i must enjoy although it may be a, a small uh, sort of a thing to do but it's, it's really worth my time now if i find something is really wasting suppose i'm stuck in a traffic jam i can uh, if i keep shouting at my driver what is he going to do he's not going to ride over the next car he's not this is not a hindi film where he'll take my car all over the cars or he'll jump it over the flyover and make me reach somewhere so then the question is what best can i do with the time if i need to relax i will relax if i need to read i will read if i need to go on a call i will go on a call so i ask myself what is the most purposeful thing i can do and that's how i manage my time and what was the second question yeah so second was sir uh, idea generation process for investing see idea generation process only requires you to first have an open because if you have a closed mind and if you are apprehensive about everything and you become doubtful about every single thing then you will never generate an idea if you always believe that money is going to be lost because the stock market is nothing but speculation and this and that you'll never find an idea 
you have to to find an idea you have to basically keep your eyes and ears open you go to a department store i'll give you a simple idea you go to a department store you've taken a, a, a you know a cart and you're walking around the uh, the uh, alleys and you for example discover that a certain segment of product has come for example organic food has come or the quality of rice that is being sold in the stores is going up and you just go and ask that guy you say that you know what you've launched these so many varieties of rice do people even buy them or there is gaming so there is competing among themselves so he tells you no now people are buying it now similarly you go to a store and you find that there are dabbas or mithai there do you really think that that mithai in a department store that has a very limited shelf life and where you will buy it and expire in two is likely to compete with all the fresh sweet shops that are around you the answer is no why will i buy for example a canned a rasgulla when i can get a fresh rasgulla from so many options in delhi or if you tomorrow tell me that to buy a, a, a samosa packet that is lying in a store i'll say are you joking it may be a good savory but it but the same logic works very well when it comes to for example your bujia because in the bujia market i don't it's it's a become a different thing the bujia packaging is good it is versatile it can last it's an any time snack etc so th- that is called common sense analysis so one is common sense analysis second is that value migration a value is migrating from one subset to the other and it was explained in the book by andrew matonsky but it was also to do with like for example how cycles gave away to motorcycles as a clear example and therefore all the cycle guys had to abandon the cycles and move to motorcycle and a huge value was created it was also created because many people at that point of time found that motorcycles had more power so it could take two people it would not have less tiredness it also became a symbol in certain places of prestige and uh, and family relations and all that so that was an example of value migration now in value migration for example i say value will migrate from petrol and diesel cars to ev the question is nobody knows which company in ev is going to succeed it is not for granted that just because you were the leader in petrol and diesel you will succeed in ev uh, which is why new companies are, will continuously come up then the thing is that where the value migration is happening and you are uncertain about who's going to win the war on the automobile front then you look at the auto ancillary and say but how does it matter whoever wins will buy it from these auto ancillary guys because they have the scalability they have technology and that and you played the auto ancillary which is what my last talk was in in february i said you know one should buy i named also two or three companies but i said auto ancillary and those stocks i think have gone up 50% since then what is something like that but anyway i said auto ancillary should play Uh, auto ancillary also benefits directly from pli because you know the product, and they are meant for export market also so they're actually export benefit now do if you tell me cars in india are going to be sold around the world i won't believe you even 1% so you have to play things like this that's how ideas are coming come from sometimes ideas also come from success stories that you read you read capital raising stories and you say you know what this was a fantastic idea how come it doesn't exist in india and you find a company that is doing it and you say yes Uh, you know i will uh, i will succeed in i mean by by sort of buying a similar story like it happened in telecom when bharti who came for an ipo the ipo actually got listed below and the company got listed below the ipo and then you said i don't know what is happening in india but let me look at the telecom market in china and the telecom market in singapore because that singtel as a partner and you said array it's a very good market is done very well in the world so you bought it but had you bought motorola in the same point of time you know motorola, that same example i'm giving of automobiles motorola did not do so well after that Nokia did not look what happened to Nokia. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for that. That is brilliantly put, sir. Uh, sir, next question is uh, from Abhirup, sir. Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, what are the points one should consider when trying to analyze any company result? Also, what are the points one should check in con call transcripts and how to understand if the management is painting a rosy picture but not performing? No, but you see, the, one of the advantage of a con call compared to, say, an annual report. is that in the con call you have a group of people who are asking questions on the tough side because either they're invested or they're researching the stock so they will say but you know your margins are getting impacted you spoke about this capex is not materialized or you spoke about this client order so they're putting the other side the management of course can still project rosy but at least you're understanding one the extent of the problem or the nature of the problem and secondly what is the level of departure in the annual report what happens is and this was learned from satyam and this will be learned uh, in repeated times from a lot of companies as in when they blow up uh, it happened with unitech it happened with syntex it will happen with many times you will discover sometimes s kumar so many such names you will find that some of these reports are only glorifying statements so what you are basically looking at is the cash flows in satyam of course it was the cash flow was also because of my, but see if today it is very easy to talk about it that time people even the most smart people were not able because you will wonder why is a software company entering into a relationship with an infrastructure company called metas 
and all of a sudden doing everything on the infrastructure whereas you know the what is the correlation of software to infrastructure to begin with what is the correlation of a software earning where you are basically a service business as opposed to an infrastructure company which is a very capital intensive business so when you start why are these related party transactions happening uh so when you start looking at some of these transactions like in a few cases where people may be very gaga because they have been portrayed something on the telegram channel and all you see but you know what are you talking about your foreign business is not even audited you don't even in a situation so then you come and say this itself is a red flag if you think a company is coming too frequently on television to talk about its stock price or another company ceo on twitter is coming every time now every second day to tell you that you know my company is so great there's something wrong the ceos are don't are don't have the time to come on twitter to comment upon how great their company is they're sitting in their offices and working and they let the market decide do you think bosch the managed bosch comes even once on uh, twitter to tell you that you look what a fantastic company we are and how cheap our stock price is so there are a lot of alarms that alarm clocks that you have to see history is full of them and you have to uh, debt to taking too much of debt acquiring company after company after company any company that acquires company after company after company is only trying to confuse you in the balance sheet so these are clear examples of trade and then you have to find uh, 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 you know the promoter entering into you know promoter is telling you this is my best company and he is selling equity the promoter is telling you that this is a great company and he is floating five other companies to do businesses other than this absolutely right perfect sir so uh, another uh, question by sandesh sir uh, this is also pretty interesting how many quarters performance do you look uh, before exiting any non performing invested company zero because i am not <laughs> investing for a quarter i am investing for where the company is and where the com- so i'll give you an example suppose you buy a stock at 100 rupees and for the whole year it does nothing but you bought it on the thesis that the company is and you know i'll give a real life example at one point of time the, the stock of suven pharma was going nowhere and when it was going nowhere i was i used i picked up i used to pick up their annual reports and think what is wrong with this why is the stock not going anywhere and i used to find the company earns very well so the earnings are all good but the company deploys that redeploys that money into r&d because it wants to move away from generic into proprietary and it wants to get into specialized uh, you know compositions so i at that point of time used to send an email because i never used to talk to the management or something but i would send an email i think it was went to mr venkat jassi who was the managing director saying i compliment you on this very good decision that you are taking to uh, you know put your money into r&d and literally used to reply back saying that you are perhaps the only shareholder who says good about me because the others who complain that the stock price doesn't go up so i used to say that there is a it's like having a bowl and in the that bowl is getting strengthened more and more because you are doing everything to ensure that it doesn't break you're doing the right moves but no the market doesn't want to value it so if it was that stock was stagnant for such a long period of time at 60 rupees and is to keep adding it adding it adding it adding it and you know at some point of time i also feel that i was i doing the wrong then i read the annual report and i read then i read about how for other companies in the pharma sector had to have proprietary and other things and then all of a sudden from you know the stock went up from 60 rupees to you know suven even split the company they in fact gave you free shares of life sciences and this and that and you discovered the stock went up maybe some 10 15 times so the question is that you have to look at it then in that case how is that quarter relevant because that quarter was happening again and again so similarly in reliance uh, when reliance was happening see the quarter you would be looking at the uh, oil sector margin then you say nothing is happening but at the same point of time they were generating they were using the cash from that business to create geo and that point of time we used to feel jio will never make profit a lot of people had said when jio had come it will not even succeed because anil ambani had not succeeded before that so there used to always be articles that time one brother is taken one technology one brother is taken another technology jio and all will not do well why are they going to burn and then what happened so how did the quarter matter today reliance is investing so much into retail that you think that why are they buying all these brand they buying every single brand every single second third fourth day something or the other apple now they even announce that like they move into food and other things but at some point of time you realize that that what is going to happen is they will become the largest owners of the mall without owning the mall because they're not investing in real estate except their own geo mall etc but in all the other malls where they will be the largest tenants because they will own food they will own clothing right so what will happen is negotiation power will be change and if that changes they will be able to squeeze out more profitability because they will be it's like saying if they go you know 50 brands have to leave the mall so it, you have to start you have to say that this is a great mindset this is like becoming a real estate asset owner without owning putting the capital in the real estate and getting the entire benefit out of it 
Absolutely, sir. Great. Great. Brilliantly put, sir. Uh, sir, we've got questions on two more sectors. One is reality sector and the other is quick service restaurants. If you have any views on that. So, so quick QSR is a good segment. The question is, uh, what are you looking at? It's not as though the QSR companies are cheap. They're, they are being given a premium by the market because it's a good segment. So the, what has basically become, like I'll give an example that I have sold one of the QSR companies. I will not name, but I've sold one of the QSR companies because I find that with the onset of Swiggy and Zomato, I have so many more choices. Now, historically, I did not believe those choices were good because obviously they were not brought to me. I mean, I had not t- tasted the food. Secondly, I would have said, Array, but he's so far away. Uh, by the time he delivers to my home, it will be one and a half hours. He will charge me delivery costs. I'll have to send my driver, etc. So I didn't order. But today, all that is eliminated. If everybody gets their food within a certain time and the quality of the food is good and you have so much of choices, then the level of competition will also go up. No, So the competition level going up at a time when real estate prices are up, fuel prices are up, manpower cost of delivery is going up, etc. Tomorrow, there will be an entire fleet change of vehicles, e-vehicles already started happening. Uh, you started the because of some labor reasons, you will start giving more. I mean, look at this quote order yesterday. The courts have yesterday said that uh, restaurants that serve food can charge service charge because it's discretionary. You go to the restaurant, but if they deliver the food to you, they cannot. So, so what will happen is that money delivery money that is gone, which is the service charge that they were putting, essentially is how they were trying to tackle salaries. So now, how will they pay the salary? They'll have to pay it from their pockets or incentives to the staff. So it has to be a call that you have to take according to a sector. If the, if you believe that the QSR segment that particular product. Has, has got great opportunity because it's rave. Everybody loves something or the other about it. Then it will do well. Again, my logic is that rather than playing directly QSR, why don't you pay, play the themes that cater to QSR? Because then it will not matter whether it is a McDonald's or a Pizza Hut or or Domino's or XY that if the guy is providing. Suppose you find the guy who provides it to all three then. Right. Right, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> So we are still getting a lot of questions on uh, how do you manage so many fields so well from stocks to legal to art to books so well and how do you phone uh, so many things at once? No, so I've answered that. See, first yes. of all, you should only do things that you're passionate about. If you start doing things, there are a lot of things in life that I may not be good at and certain things in life it may bore me. Now, if you make me sit in a meeting that bores me or things that I do not do in life, what will happen is there'll be a tiredness and you will not be able to last the entire day. On the other hand, if you do things that fascinate you or will pull you, then you will be able to do, th- not only will you do them, but you will find an extra energy in you to do them. It, it's just like the ability of a cricketer to hit a six and you will find that all of a sudden he had extraordinary you know, strength to hit that six or to even come out with an unorthodox shot. So many cricketers are able to, at one point of time, there used to be debates that the time that, from the time that a bowler leaves a bowl to the time it comes to the batsman is such a fraction of time that how do they even plan their moves? But today it is all changing because there is, they're getting trained to do things and they're excited about it. They become heroes when they discover like Dhoni, when he created a helicopter shot, became a hero. And you know, it was, it was a highly successful shot for him. So the thing is, you have to first find what is it that fascinates you. Now, within what it fascinates you, you have to maximize it because it's like saying, I found good, now I must do more good. But if what does not fascinate you, like for example, if I'm not good at certain things or certain subjects or if, if I find that on Twitter certain people have nothing but only a negative mindset. I mean, there are times when I put up, an, the other day I put up a stock and I wrote that, I, I'm sorry I did not share with you all cap stock, but I bought it and the reason I didn't share because in February, etc. the market was doing bad. But uh, you know, to my shock, the stock is done well and name the stock. There were at least 10 or 12 people who, that one tweet of four lines after naming the stock was saying stock ka naam bato. So you can't waste time. I mean, you can't keep replying the whole day as if you were a concierge desk of a hotel. Some things you'll have to leave to people. There are some times they put an article in the newspaper and they say source. What am I supposed to do? So you have to, if somebody asks you an important question, like this is a good question. How do you manage time? It will benefit a lot of people. You ask me, even if you ask me what food do you eat for lunch, it's a good question because you may have a health perspective. You may want to understand are they more energetic food or something. But if you keep asking me useless things or I meet people, uh, like if I'm driving in my car and I find that there's a quarrel happening on the side of the road, should I stop my car just to see that quarrel? Like many people stop. Or what am I going to do? I don't have that time. I'd rather use that time more productively. So you have to find zones of productivity and maximize them. And you have to find what drags your energy. And what drags your energy, you have to minimize. 
absolutely so i think that is uh that in itself is a skill that one really needs to practice and develop because it's very easy to get distracted and get involved in uh, such useless uh, you know roundabouts but yeah that's that's uh, brilliant sir uh so another question is uh, do you use uh, any technical analysis whatsoever in your stock picking never and i have no intention to and most of the top fund managers that i have uh, met or have interacted with they have never in their life seen technicals all right because okay. tell me something <laughs> if a stock is suppose today and i you know i i am everybody has got a different competence it works for certain people but i look at a stock and tomorrow it is the stock is down 20% like right now in the market corrected a lot of stocks you know if just do this exercise all of you do this exercise you will see that in the last few months the headlines in the newspapers were that so many stocks in 52 week lows then some people commented to me why are you even commenting upon this nifty also hit a 52 week low then that nifty that 52 week lows has gone up certain stocks have gone up 25 to 30% from there so what will the chart do whereas and on the other side what will happen is i if the stock has fallen and the and whatever it has fallen in your chart says it is at a low and now it's going to hit kill support level 1 support level 2 that day some big in, mr ashish kachulia comes into the market and he buys 5 lakh shares of that company what will your chart do next day it will come in the block deals 10 circuits or 5 circuits whatever number of circuit the stocks will go up then blogs will write dolly khanna is buying this so and so is buying this etc 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 and see it's so many variables decide the stock then how does it matter then management will come in and say that we have also bought then some people will say that's a very good sign the management is also buying because the management is not looking at the chart they're looking at the worth of the stock so i am not i am not a believer in this and it does not matter to me if if a stock is at 52 charts or it's 52 week high i mean stocks at 52 week highs fall na you saw the the correction in it all the charts were supportive of that of the fact that it will not fall you saw the correction in some of the chemical names when it fell so these things will happen you know by the way just for information the other day i put it up on twitter that amongst other things i said you know i like ultra tech cement so i was people were saying are cement abhi cement sector mein downgrades ho rahe the in the last few months ultra tech just for information ultra tech cement is up 30% for the month it's not a baby ultra tech cement is the largest cement company when look at the market capitalization so and now if you tell me look at nifty 50 and tell me how many companies hit 30% in nifty 50 so that's what you have to look at you have to be the fisherman whose objective is to catch the fish and if it if you catch the fish the purpose for which you are catching it whether it was to sell it whether it is to eat it it should be accomplished your objective you if you had the x ray lights to come and look through the water and to find out the most ideal fish to buy on the uh, to buy or to sort of catch at the most ideal time when it had just finished eating and therefore it was in a much more healthy situation as an example it's not going to happen then you're living in illusionary world absolutely sir that's brilliantly put sir Uh, sir another question is uh, by finance for you too and they was your view on adani group's debt and their fundamentals no comments because <laughs> i am visiting ahmedabad and may i have a client meeting etc so no comments okay okay sir <coughs> sir another interesting question since you are in ahmedabad uh, in liquor sector your views on usl and global spirits spirits no i will comment on liquor sector i will not necessarily okay. comment on these two companies because in liquor sector there are companies that have good governance and liquor companies that companies that evade simply because of cash model that they don't bring to the balance sheet you find your good company your good company will be characterized by good brand it will be characterized by good governance etc so if you find that the company is good it's a very good sector it is not it is not a sector even in it's like you know it reminds me of devdas the movie when there is recession he will drink when the girl leaves him he will drink when the girl is with him he will drink because then he's celebrating and in case he's getting married he will drink so the question is the sector is a, is a very good sector to be invested in so you have to basically find companies that allocate their resources well and you remain invested in that and the right. best part is if you get tired of whiskey you go to gin and you get tired of gin you go to tequila and if you are if you are if you put on weight then you say now i become very conscious now i only drink gin and tequila and if you sort of lose weight you say now i can afford to have you know in vodka so it doesn't matter everything will be will work for you <laughs> right evergreen stocks okay so next question is uh, by lalit ji and he has asked do you invest in mutual funds or indexes no, none okay because i'll tell you the i'm not discouraging you and you must do it mutual funds are very good 
they have done very well over a period of time you find your winners and put money buying exchange traded funds have done very well in fact it is very difficult to beat etfs over a long term period simply because the composition of the uh, of the uh, of the sensex or the nifty changes and by that they readjust but you know i am a person who likes to read and i like to research then what is the point of after all this effort i have to only buy something so predictable so it's a very it's a very it's a very personal issue i like to find my stocks i like to beat the market i like the journey it's, the journey is not just about the benchmarking it's also about the learning that comes with it whereas if i buy etf personally i will have no learning although i rec- i recommend that people who don't even warren buffett has said to his own fund he said that after i'm not alive instead of buying stocks just keep buying etfs right right absolutely sir uh so next is uh, aditya soni sir's question he is asked what's your take on aquaculture shrimp how to analyze this sector if you have any views on aquaculture yeah i did speak last uh, last uh, whatever species that they try spoke about the sector hmm. the there are three companies predominantly into the sector of the three companies two companies stocks have gone up some 30 40% so i you know that's become little become little more embarrassing for me to then talk about those stocks when they have gone up they can still go up but you see somebody sitting with a 40% profit is not the same person sitting with no profit na because he's got he's been able to create buffer just because of the profit i mean if tomorrow the stocks fall if i suppose the stock fall i'll say you know even falls 40% i have not lost money but you buy it and it falls you've lost 40% but the sector according to me should have a great time because of the fact that food is globally becoming short there are restrictions being put in, being put on fishing particularly because of chinese illegal fishing there are issues to do with contamination of water and how the oceans have to be preserved and therefore greater consciousness they want to put limitations also on fish, fishery because the, the count is not being adhered to in some cases there are standards of fishing that are prescribed that are not allowed seafood is considered to be relatively more healthy as opposed to red meats and other things therefore it has a great demand there are very good logistics and warehousing facilities due to which it can be frozen uh, so it is a, according to me it is a good sector that will grow in uh, with time even people who decide to give up non veg even if you see this many people who give up non veg you ask them though you don't eat fish don't no, say we eat fish they don't count fish as veg and non veg in many places around the world so that we basically uh, is a clear indicator like some people don't construe egg to be non veg i'm giving you random examples so these are not likely to suffer except eggs is much more commoditized business whereas fishing fisheries is a much more specialized business because if you cultivate it better the pricing goes up if you are able to ensure that the variety which is what avanti at one point had done when it when it moved into a, a different kind of a shim feed right right absolutely sir so uh, iska mere paas kafi sari uh, stock specific companies hain so maybe i can run their uh, quickly run out their names and in case you want to share your view on any of them so we go maybe before you do that one request yeah. that i have to you you should tell people to share feedback on twitter i'll tell you why because that feedback only makes us better as speakers or makes us uh, you know not good as speaker whatever you want to call it the yeah. thing is that in stocks ki jo recommendations and all hain wo to log koi waise bhi twitter mein puchega if you know about the company only then can you answer if you don't if you yeah. ask me about a company that i don't know obviously i can't answer i can't just look up a database and answer it yeah. secondly whatever stocks or sectors we like we generally talk about them that is the very purpose of twitter i openly talk about the fact that if i like banking i say i like banking and i and then i support it with articles now if you start imposing my view on something that i'm not familiar with yeah then my answer can be wrong so why so I, what is important is the feedback of learning are you learning in this session are you going to are you going to sleep as a better investor are you going to make lesser mistakes and have we contributed to the process have we told you how to generate ideas or allocate your capital or your time some because you asked on this that feedback is very very critical i have noticed right now while we are talking that on twitter people are only asking should i buy this should i buy that should i buy this should i buy that if you yeah. buy it suppose you buy these stocks in the market falls then what will you hold yeah. it will you sell it do you have the money will you top up will you average or will you just get rid of it stock falls 20% and somebody tells you it is broken technical chart what will you do i don't know the answer to you to yeah. answer you i have to be comprehensive it's like a doctor he doesn't see all your reports and he starts giving you prescriptions and the doctor is in trouble no he will never do that so he should yeah. do that yeah yeah absolutely and that that conviction even if the uh, even if somebody tells you with all the logic and everything unless you actually absorb it and are have that conviction yourself you won't be able to hold it so you need to understand what your view comes from so absolutely i completely so that's and why also, I, you know the other thing is you ask me a stock today i say yes or no yeah after that one week some development happens yeah my view changes yeah i suppose own it and i exit yeah but i don't have the memory to remember which one of you asked me the question 
Absolutely. So are you expecting me to then put up a bulletin like a notice board and say, now today I've exited this, today I've... The reason why I do... see some of... So you should ask a question that sometimes you write that you bought some stock. Yeah. And sometimes you write that you sold some stock. Why do you do this? The yeah. point is when I'm buying it, my conviction is there. It may be yeah. right or wrong is a different story, but it is there and I articulate my reasons. When yeah. I'm selling it, I tell you that I'm selling it because the valuation discomfort is there or I found a better opportunity or the percentage of that stock in my portfolio had become disproportionately high and therefore I have to mitigate risks. Yeah. So the answers, so just because the stock, I'm selling some stock because the percentage in my portfolio became high doesn't mean it's a bad stock. It means I'm only leveling the portfolio allocation. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely, sir. uh this is this is actually very true so shall we uh, just for the sake of this uh, since we have just discuss this avoid stock specific questions for now sir or do you want to take up a few maybe no if let's like, see i just answered you and yeah. it's very difficult for me to i don't know the stocks and all but i'm just saying yeah. very difficult if you just ask me as an example if you tell me xyz stock lena hai yeah to nahi ek second aur wo 10 percent badh jata hai aur market 20 percent badh jati hai Right. So first, will you tell me I was right, or will you tell me I'm wrong? Absolutely. That's that's that becomes very subjective. Yeah. Yeah. And वो वो एक महीना नहीं बढ़ता and you sell it and उसके next जैसे ही आप बेचते तब बढ़ जाता है फिर. Yeah. 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 So this is what happens. See, when I when sometimes when I write about a stock, people say, even even now, I mean, I and I gave this in my last Twitter talk. People, some people who, for example, troll, they said, you know, you got TV eighteen wrong. So I told them that you know your question of getting it wrong is very sad. I must tell you that you will be very disappointed. They said why? Because I said you forgot that repeatedly I told you to be a diversified investor, which basically meant my risk allocation to the stock was low. Yeah. Secondly, you did not read a tweet when I bought at thirty-two rupees, but you read a tweet when I bought at sixty-five or sixty-six rupees. Yeah. So actually, now you thirdly you asked me whether the quantity I bought at thirty-two versus the quantity at sixty-eight. Obviously, when a stock is cheaper, you buy it more, and when the stock is going up, you don't buy it so much more. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. now you average it and say that my average price on the stock was forty-five rupees and or forty-seven rupees, and I exited at forty-four. So yeah. I have lost only effectively forty-seven or the eight in minus forty-four, which is four rupees or ten percent. Right. In the same time, the mid-cap index and the small-cap index has fallen twenty percent. Now yeah. you calculate that: am I ha- uh, happy or am I lost? So they don't know this. So mm-hmm. I say that don't equate it because you only came. You did not buy it at uh, at uh, at whatever thirty-two rupees because you looked at the chart and felt the stock is doing nothing. When the chart went from thirty-two rupees to eighty rupees, you got to carried away. So when you saw eighty correcting to sixty-eight and one Safir Azan coming and writing, you felt oh let me buy it now because one. It has gone to eighty, so it will cut touch eighty again, and it has doubled from thirty or more than doubled. So let me buy. Is it not about investing? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, sir. There is FOMO, wala thing which, I mean, unfortunately, people have been into, and especially the COVID bull run that has that came up. Us me, anybody and everybody who was investing, and since it was a bull run, everybody fired away. and so people have been used to this this kind of investing which they have a lot of people including i also belong to that same covid generation so uh, these are all new markets where actually people learn the value of fundamental investing and actually proper investing i think can be learned only in such markets no and i'll give you a real example of one of my friends who was a great teacher and he shares a lot about his life and i really respect him mr vijay kedia like he he gives very authentic interviews Now suppose you bought into one of the companies that Mr. Vijay Kedia owns, say called Tejas. You made money, but Mr. Vijay Kedia recently indicated that when he first bought Ki Tejas, it had the stock fell some fifty sixty percent, but he kept buying. You may not have bought. He bought and therefore he he therefore had a lower rate. Now for example, one of his stocks called Web of Global is corrected from some eight hundred rupees to three hundred. You're not going to buy it three hundred. When the stock goes to fifteen, I'm just giving example. I don't know where it is going, but suppose tomorrow it becomes eight hundred. And it comes out in the newspaper that Vijay Kedia's portfolio has gone up so much. Then you will come and buy. So that is the problem. People don't want to buy stocks when they're correct. When they should be allocating more money, they don't allocate. When they go up and they feel that the story is becoming validated because of stock price, not by value but by price, then they want to pour their money. And therefore, some of the large fund managers in the country face a dilemma. They say when the market is at the highest, they give us we get the highest amount of SIPs. When the market falls, the SIP falls. This is the only time when the retail is working different, because and that is therefore the one of the reasons why the retail investment in mutual funds are doing better. Right, right, absolutely, sir. So uh, I've got an interesting question uh, from Dr. Rishabh Kumar. Uh, he has asked: uh, We have certain stocks which hit highs and again decline, and then hit same high. 
is it good to swing trade in them now i don't mean to ask the same so we just we, are, we were actually discussing something similar where uh, uh, prices just because it hit a high there's no guarantee that it will go there but uh, is swing trading from a uh, fundamental perspective maybe in cyclical stocks or something like that is that something that is possible or even matlab uh, can be done this see how first of all the answer to that depends upon your competence to understand what is it that you are looking at what is the swing is the swing something which is based upon fundamental or it is based upon chart like i don't do chart now if i i as an example bought india mart at a certain price the stock price from there went up to 10000 i sold india mart not at 10000 but at 8000 now after that india mart stock came down to maybe 3000 rupees i bought it it went back to 4200 i sold it the question is why am i buying and selling and today i don't own it as a just a standard disclosure the question is why did i do this because the question is that 8000 rupees it was overvalued so i sold it when it fell from 8000 to 3000 i felt that you know the destruction the business is not so high the business was slowing down just dial was also slowing down b2b was slowing down but it was not so high that from from 8000 you brought it to to 3000 5000 rupee erosion on 8000 rupees is a very substantial erosion of the business it's not that something was wrong and of course in between the management announced the buyback also now when the buyback was being announced they you know you look at it and say you know the buyback maybe just be a support because at the end of the day maybe the promoter needs money maybe for example they are not able to deploy money and they want to squeeze the money out or for example they don't want to pay out extraordinary dividend or something because they don't have utility of that money because it will be tax inefficient i mean so many reasons but you then you look and say is it correct that this entire business is now growing the business means not of that company overall and you come and say look i look at other companies mr kumar mangalam billa in his interview from davos said that you know there has not been a single case of a super app from india so then you start thinking you know that's actually true even just dial has not succeeded so what is the what is going to be the next catalyst of this company so the exclusivity model sometimes will maybe challenge because other people after all don't forget instagram is hosting a lot of people now that instagram is becoming a business channel Uh, you a lot of people are retailing through instagram whatsapp is becoming a retail channel a lot of people are retailing through whatsapp so you come and say you know the model is changing and people are much more literate in terms of the use of mobiles than they were before then you take it your own call and say or oh, do i have other choices if i am so much uncertain about it why am i even taxing my mind so swing trade is also a function of what you understand if you decide to buy ultra tech because it has fallen a lot and then you find that it goes up 30% in a month and you don't believe the cement trade business for whatever reasons of, of course it is valid another person says not look mr kumar mangalam billa is spending 10000 crore or whatever on setting up a paint business then after some days he announces i'm going to set up an entire you know home uh, solution business and you come and say that you know there is a transformation happening at uh, grassims level itself and grassim is a holding company of ultra tech and therefore the lot of changes may benefit ultra tech in some way because platform may be created for them now that platform is very different from a b2b platform because there the entire margin is yours because you are only going to be selling your own product you are the manufacturer so you have to understand it from the perspective of the business not from the perspective of the stock price right right absolutely sir okay so uh, i've got two more sectoral questions uh, one we briefly discussed the steel sector and the other one is amc and insurance companies yeah so i don't own insurance companies I, in fact wrote against insurance companies and i my, my exit from one of the top insurance companies was also picked up by economic times and converted into a story and that insurance company uh, has now uh, you know fallen 40% from that level i don't believe in that for multiple reasons first of all a lot of people were hurt during covid by by business and many of their business claims against it did not work because the insurance companies blamed it as an extraordinary act i as a lawyer you know got so many matters where somebody said you know i my business was shut my export order got cancelled because of xyz reasons i invoked insurance they did blamed it on some cases where so many litigations went on etc etc so what happens is you've shaken the confidence of somebody who thinks that for many years they paid an insurance premium and they got nothing second is that life insurance was very much connected to the market returns because there were not too many products lic was like a great product at one point of time because they would do something and they will give you some bonus it was also a method of tax saving that point that saving amount was very good today there are so many forms of tax saving there are so many forms of capital market related thing including exchange traded funds etc that it is not the sole method of 
making money from the market increments thirdly a lot of the things were spoiled by miss selling because what happened is that some of the banks got greedy their representatives in fact and they start because they have huge commissions up front so what would happen is they would miss sell you insurance products which had very low yield because they would make more money on miss selling those products i myself in fact decided not to do business with one of the private banks because the manager came and miss sold the product which was one of which is their flagship product and i only this time waited for the redemption and said you know to help with you after this i'm never giving you business so what happened is there are a lot of factors fourth what is happening is the human life expectancy is going up so in human life expense is the purpose of insurance that my family should be taken care of if some you know thing happens to me but overall the human life expectancy is going up healthcare services improving i feel and the premiums are getting more expensive so i feel that you know it's not as if it's not a good sector some lot of people call it a sunrise sector but i find that you know what it has too much of competition coming in from so many sources there has been there have been so many companies that have propped up and made their products or come out with something else or the other that i don't find like for example tomorrow corporate if i work in a job the company may say that i'll secure you i'll get secure you from many perspective i will give you a future generation the job i will give you this and that because they also want loyalty loyalty will have its price so i am not a believer in that i feel that if you have to play the financial inclusion theme the sum some sum in substance of it is banks because the bank will encompass everything so why go and just restrict yourself to insurance right absolutely sir absolutely thank you so much and uh, sir uh, devina ji has also joined us uh, thank you so much for joining oh, us oh i'm very grateful because she is very smart enough and she'll answer some good questions so i'll now also get to hear some lot of wisdom yeah uh, hi uh, uh, hi ma'am can you hear us uh, yes i can hear you <laughs> thank you so much for joining us ma'am hey you're welcome uh, ma'am i would love to have your take on the uh, to start with a broader take on the market itself right now ma'am uh okay so i i have not been there for for the whole of the session so i don't know all of what uh, uh, you guys have discussed so broader take on the market i always like to look at the long term and long term data and uh, one important thing in equity markets you know all of us think that equity markets uh, have higher risk but they give higher return you know that is what there in our mind and we think in, in long term market mein 14 15% ban jata hai because that has been the long term return from the indian market if you uh, see from the time sensex started in 1979 you had uh, a compounding at little over 1% so that we all know so if you had started at rupees in the sensex today it is 44000 rupees but then we said that again you know we are very much data driven so is it like what if you missed out 10 good days in the market in 40 odd years 10 days doesn't seem like a lot and you you know if you're just thinking about it you say it shouldn't matter much but actually if you miss out on the 10 best days of the market in 40 years that 44000 comes down to 15000 two thirds of your return gone if you miss out on 30 good days so which is less than uh, average of one day a year uh, you are down to less than 4000 rupees so more than 90% of your return is gone so and the other thing which was there that when do these up move days occur and they don't occur during the uh, mad bull phase ever i mean the only exception was the harshad mehta phase because that was a rigged market it was not a natural market other than that all of them come when markets have fallen and people are generally not feeling good about the markets so now you don't know whether the markets have bottomed out or not but now it is in a range where the risk is more in being out of the market than being in the market because if you're out of the market if you miss out one or two of these days you can never make it up so that has been our advice that whatever equity allocation you want out of your total asset pile i mean not from a 3 month or a 6 month perspective but from a long term perspective then it is time to be in the market now if if your perspective is a shorter time then please don't like for example you know a friend of mine who just sold an ancestral property and he was saying that you know maybe 6 months one year later i will find something that i want to buy so should i give you my money to manage in the meantime i said please don't please put it in a bank fixed deposit where we are where you are sure that after 6 months you will get your principal back because uh, uh, visibility in equity markets of 6 months is not that great but for a longer term yes this is a time to be in the market maybe not put in 100% of what you want to put in but at least start putting it in in two three tranches over two three months 
so that is the take on the market brilliant ma'am thank you so much for sharing that with us ma'am uh, ma'am we had also uh, we had put up this session and we had uh, posted a tweet asking for questions and we had received a question specifically for you as well two questions from ekla vesa so one was your take on the ray dalio's new world order theory and second given that there is a lot of unnecessary criticism and hate on chinese economy and the government in western and indian india your opinion on chinese economy in the next few decades ah uh, difficult to take a <laughs> bet on the chinese economy in the next few decades <laughs> next few decades who knows what happens to anything but uh, right now of course the uh, chinese i mean chinese uh, Ch- chinese have managed their economy much better because they started off with the same per capita income as us around 1980 and now you know they are five times bigger so now there is no way you can even dream of catching up and it's not as if that they are not growing anymore so china is the two or three so if you look at what's happening in china the two or three broad things and some of it is contradictory also one they are very clear they want to be on the cutting edge of innovation in everything whether you know, we all are familiar with the electric vehicle and battery thing but they are there like from neuroscience to semiconductors to pharma everywhere they want to be cutting edge in terms of innovation they w- want to go head to head with the us they are whatever in terms of spending they need subsidies they need they are putting that in place but they are also moving back to more state control because essentially they don't want anyone getting too big for their boots so this was very clear to us beginning of last year i think it was february or something when that uh, ant financial that alibaba subsidiary uh, had to pull their ipo at the last minute because of the government and immediately soon after that we sold all our china big tech names because we said this is an unmodulable risk that the government will wake up one day and do something to some company because they don't like that billionaire be getting too big for their boots so after that all our china invest i mean we cut down at that point uh, china and the mostly in below the radar companies you know footwear company here a semiconductor company there and we were underway china but now china is looking as uh, one of the better markets in the world so right now i mean we would have china weightage in our uh, global portfolios and funds fact other than india china and mexico to an extent canada those are the markets that are uh, looking relatively good globally at the moment brilliant thank you so much for that uh okay uh, i've got two three questions that are this and basically so this is kind of interesting uh, i want to ask both of you uh, is there an ideal uh, portfolio sizing so of course there is a debate around concentrated portfolios versus diversified so beyond that as well do you think there is an ideal number of stocks that as a retail investor maybe that some around that people should keep okay i will uh, tell you what my thinking is as a retail investor you must have about at least 25 to 30 stocks uh and uh, two things one they should not be very concentrated in terms of sectors you know if in 25 stocks you have uh, no eight banks and uh, Ten uh, FMCG companies, then you are not diversified. So you have to diversify reasonably across sectors also, and because out of these twenty-five odd stocks, some might become multi-baggers. But you don't today which ones will become multi-baggers. I sometimes get these questions on Twitter and otherwise uh, that, madam, you found this HDFC bank twenty-five years ago at the. you know split adjusted price of 3 rupees 80 paisa so what what can what, what is the next sdfc bank that i can buy for my child so that when she grows up she has that <laughs> i said nobody knows at the beginning even aditya puri didn't know that sdfc uh, bank would become what it did though i mean even though would, that cover of our report then was the picture of a baby saying this is where it is and we had arnold schwarzenegger that uh, this is where it will be but uh, even so who would have said that the you couldn't see the entire journey then so bottom line means some of them will be multi bagger some of them will also turn out to be duds so in fact i'll tell people that as an investor the simplest hack which will improve your returns is that when you buy a stock always tell yourself that i may be wrong because the very best fund manager in the world will not be right 100% or even 90% of the time you if you are uh, if you are right 60 65 the time you are right up there so when you buy a stock always be ready that it may turn out to be a mistake so that if you make that 
mental thing in the uh, uh, right at the beginning it will hold you in very good stead because otherwise as human beings what happens is the uh, stock falls 25% 30% and we keep finding reasons to convince ourselves why it still looks good so be clinical about it put your systems in place in fact i did a video recently uh, on when you should sell a stock so if you just if you, you are obviously not doing this full time so at the very least have trailing stop is that if a stock goes to 200 and let's say falls back to 150 you exit don't try to justify things in fact that is the reason why over time we have moved from a human being taking decisions to essentially the decisions getting triggered by the machine especially the exit decisions entry we still have more of a human overlay but if a stop loss is triggered we don't override it so in your own portfolio be strict with that and as i said that if you choose with a system with some study hopefully some of those stocks are going to do very well and will compensate for whatever doesn't do well that's brilliant ma'am thank you so much for that and you absolutely like you said ki uh, the human factor trying to justify things i think i personally have lost quite a few of my trades because of trying to justify those faults and uh, yeah that, nothing better than that ma'am thank you so much for that uh sir sir aapse bhi main i would like to ask the same question if you can uh, tell us uh, do you also have something in mind around the ideal number of portfolio sizing how many stocks should be there maybe in uh, on the diversification versus concentration debate so i my answer is that over a period of time you know yourself better than anybody else knows you after all your ability of how you react to market drawdowns up drowns uh, how euphoric you get how greedy you get how uh, risk averse you are how risk prone you are what is your source of capital etc is all known to you your sources of income etc if i'll just give you a hypothetical situation there are people who come and tell you that with uh, with concentrated portfolios we have touched the moon but how many such people are there there are very few but on the other side there are much more success stories of mutual funds and pmss and others like what happens is a guy will tell you that i only own 10 stocks but he will then tell you that i own four mutual funds and in those four mutual funds they own you know 30 stocks each so the question is that you have to develop you know the most important point uh, amongst this discussion is what devina told you that you cannot call yourself diversified by owning more stocks and by owning you know a particular sector and then saying that i'm diversified because i looked up the database and i bought all the banks and i had nothing else so uh, for me personally being diversified has worked like, beautifully when i make an error the cost of the error is low when i do not make an error and it works for me and as you say the returns are high the value of that particular stock keeps going up in my portfolio a because of price escalations b it also goes up because at higher conviction i keep buying with more so if i started at say 1% and went to 10% it's good enough for me i will not go to the extent of making it 20 30% knowing how much the world you know sort of falters on certain things and other things that happen secondly if the portfolio this is back to that entire thing that i told you about that uh, one in 100 multi baggers thing yet you have uh, you have it would never happen like, hypothetically i'm just talk, talking suppose you have created a portfolio of 100 stocks just for mathematical reason with 1% weightage it will not happen that in that entire process of study you will only have a, a very selective number of winners and many losers if your process was right and how did i learn this this i learned from from my own experience but later on i discussed this and samir ola put it up in a beautiful presentation where he showed that if you own one third of the market and did not own two third of the market that one third of the market that actually outperforms is enough to make you have a multi bagger return compared you would have beaten all the sensex returns if you own the top one third companies the question is your process of selection of one third you cannot overcrowd that by sector you cannot overcrowd that by by saying that i'm only looking at 52 week highs and making it etc etc so you know and then there are others i have the, i like to read about company because i don't construe stock market returns as a function of a percentage return which is actually the price of the stock versus where it goes for me there is a hidden cost there which is the cost of knowledge there is a cost of experience i'm able to put that experience to many use my own life which is beyond investing similarly i'm able to put experience or mistakes that i make in my life into investing so i construe that as a price of education which is inbuilt and i feel that diversified investors do also i have no sleepless nights like if i'm sitting right now and you tell me that a company has come out with very bad results and the entire twitter is spending time or other forum is spending time that the stock is going to open 10 12 15% down i have no problems at all can i just add a bit to uh, what uh, uh, safir just said 
which is that i mean in any time it is very likely that the very best performer uh, will be somebody with a concentrated portfolio i mean look at the world's richest list it is topped by people who hold only one stock each whether it's bill gates or jeff bezos or elon musk essentially they are all but is does that mean that it is a good strategy to hold only one stock or hold only five stocks that is the i mean of course they are also running the businesses but leaving that aside for the moment the point is this that investing is a game of luck come skill everything in life is a game of luck come skill i mean chess is the closest thing you have to skill only what diversification does is that it gets and this is this you can mathematically prove that it makes sure that your skill whatever your skill level is that gets transferred into your results it is like this if you are tossing a coin you know that it should come out heads 50% of the time but if you toss it only 10 times it you might get eight heads you might get two heads but you are unlikely to get five heads but if you toss it 100 times then it is likely to be close to that fifth number so if you know that your process is such that you are going to be right x percent of the time by increasing the number of bets which is essentially by diversifying you can make sure you are closer to that with lower volatility you know as, as for example you know we manage funds so are we always say that 60% of what you pay us is for managing the risk for reducing the drawdowns and 40% is for managing the return and if you do it properly both come so that is the important thing and which is why i also in fact i retweeted an old article of mine today on why when we ask whether we should follow successful investors or for, for that matter successful anyone or any company in life why that is totally the wrong way to go about it because when you look at somebody who has let us made the richest investor list and say that i must follow that strategy which they have followed that is the wrong question to ask because often what will happen is that the person who has reached there might have followed a very high risk strategy in which 90 or 99% of the people went out of business but the people who were left made out like bandits so it will totally mislead you the question always has to be that of all the people who followed the strategy how many won and if you look at even businesses many of them use this diversification technique if you read about the history of amazon for example we look at it as this linear story ki ye kiya ye kiya ye kiya and this is where it reached but if you read the history of amazon they tried so many things and so many things did not work and but a few things did work so always think through and this thing what i'm talking about is uh call survivorship bias which many of you may be familiar with that whenever you look at data look at all the data everybody who was there at that point in time i mean i hear all these stories that uh, some so and so's father or grandmother bought hindustan river or in right dc bank or this or it's compounded so many times i wish my parents had started investing but your parents even if they had started investing they might be holding uh you know hindustan motors or balapur industries and all those companies which were in the or sindhya steamship which were all the original sensex companies and had been around decades then or recently and this is a real life thing uh friend said that my mother has this portfolio which she hasn't looked at in 20 years and here it is and see what you can do and that had all these nepc micron and tsq software and all of the hits of the early 2000s so i mean always in life look at that whatever data you are starting with has all the companies all the stocks or whatever you are looking at which would have existed at that point in time not the ones which have done well and therefore are making the headlines today so have rigor in your process yeah and one thing i wanted to add to this is that i don't consider the owner of a business owning his own stock as as a in- as a portfolio investor he is a business investor so therefore as an example uh, steve jobs was not buying apple shares when he was heading apple 
and even now bill gates largest investment was in berkshire hathaway so what happens is if the insider doesn't know so much and see it's very different when he is running it like if you say mr ambani owns his own business or xyz you know then they are owning their business and they're also they're thinking of mitigating risk of for example oil with geo geo with retail with something else etc etc so uh, so that's one thing second so you know it's it, it, i it, i don't construe the ownership of an individual in his own company which is running which is bread and like tomorrow like by that logic if you ask me you'll say that safir you are what is your investment i'll say one is equity and one is my law firm then you'll say you're very concentrated because my stake in my law firm is very important for me and it's high but that's not how i construe it i mean that my law firm also will not concentrate on one client or one jurisdiction it'll try to mitigate so everybody has to see it from that perspective see uh, the I, i've actually uh, deliberated on this a lot it's one it used to be one of my favorite topic concentration diversification and i looked at the data and i said you know all the rich people in the world like devina saying who got rich but they were actually business owners their business enriched them see even as a investor you can get rich owning a handful of stocks it is not that it is impossible but that's a game of luck it is not a game of skill so which is why many successful investors you will find have made all their money in one or two stocks but that as i said is not predictable not consistent uh, i mean that's the way for example lot of my personal money would have been made but i never wanted to take any or the else's money and manage it that way till, till i had a system where there is some replicability some consistency some predictability Right. That's that's brilliant. Uh, it was so interesting to hear both of your views, and uh, this was amazing. Okay, I have uh, another very interesting question uh, from Pragun sir. Uh, how much margin of safety should be kept for big businesses with good market share, but low revenue growth and mediocre profit growth? Should you consider them for your portfolio, considering they are trading at less than twelve PE? So uh, this, I, I kind of again want to take it on a broader context. So, for instance, uh, Safir sir, we also discussed an example of ITC that at one point people were. not very happy with itc but then now it is despite one of the giants it's kind of running away like anything so uh, what is your uh, both of you uh, 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 panel tonight uh, what is your view on such businesses so view on sorry, what businesses uh, so big businesses with good market share but low revenue growth and mediocre profit growth so but if the business growth see again you're talking about growth let's assume you're a low growth what do you call as a low growth suppose to say 10% you'll call it a low growth you'll call it high growth question is also what is the market valuing that growth at if the market is not even prepared so what happens is if the market expects say a 2% growth like what has happened with the diva's result all of a sudden people said we did not expect this volume growth so if you look at it from that perspective it is also a mismatch of expectations and it is also commensurate to a company's uh, you know ability but for example if you tell me that a company is going to grow low it's a big company it is like like let's take an example of grasim only grasim may have a lot of intrinsic value reports low growth numbers so the market doesn't really care beyond a certain point so the growth is a function the value is a function of what you what is the proponent on the other side is it in a set value is it a growth value is it what is the value that you're talking about so you know the other thing is that this is my personal view that although itc may have been the best performer it doesn't mean that it has to be the best performer after this sometimes the inefficiencies of the market are caught on and that inefficiency may have been caught on in its case like for many years hindustan unilever had no return then all of a sudden it had the best years of its return and then it may i'm not talking about hindustan lever but there may be other consumer companies right now that may enter into a stagnation phase over the next few years that's or it may enter into relative market underperformance phase like infosys also has gone through this cycle and so many companies have gone through this cycle so don't be fixated only on this fact that it's a big company and low rate big company and high rate like uh, th- there are big companies that all of a sudden report good growth rates also because they do something interesting or some catalyst moves in their way so i can't be looking at a company per se i have to look at where the company's value is is it proportional to the market price and is there an opportunity to grow so, uh, similarly for example people fall into dividend traps they look at the company and they see yield of this company is so much therefore it is good but then you are comparing it to fixed deposits and in that case look at it from a fixed deposit comparison don't compare it to the stock market because if you do then you will come and complain that this companies for example an omc has not uh, given me returns because every year when the dividend is adjusted it will adjust its value to that extent or even if it doesn't exist it will not commence it is only getting adjusted to the value of the dividend i mean it's only reacting to the dividend 
see for example there is an mnc stock on the market right now in a pharma sector that has been doling out extraordinary dividends for the last three three consecutive times the dividend payout is huge so you can get carried away but and say that this is great this company has become very good this kind of it's the cash flows are very good but no it's not the cash flows they're distributing the cash flows they are probably telling you that that india business does not have value for incremental capital so we are returning the money essentially to the parent you happen to be a uh, holding the shares and because under law you are obligated to get the dividend so you're also getting it but they have no use for that capital castrol india as an example another example reduced the face value of the shares and returned you back 5 rupees where did the stock go it's a big company no but what is the growth so you have to look at it from the cycle of the business itself right absolutely sir absolutely ma'am uh, can i have your yeah. take as well please yeah i mean i uh, what safir was saying was so important that people think that there's something called all weather stocks that no matter what happens to the market they will do well however as he pointed out from hindustan lever to infosys every stock no matter how good the company has gone through ups and downs has gone through long periods of underperformance if not actual uh, fall or often times what happens in larger companies is the stock goes nowhere for years and that is how the adjustment happens through time rather than so always look at data this is the important thing that always always look at data don't get carried away by narratives or stories you know as human beings we all love stories i mean that is what makes us human in fact stories is the one thing that is common across all civilizations so we all love the stories but always whenever you hear a story about a company go back as much as many years as possible and see whether it's borne out by the financials and also by the stock price movement and also often people only talk in terms of growth this is the other thing the please also look at things beyond the income statement this is another point that i keep hammering that people only look at any analysis of a company stops at sales ka ye hua this happened to margins that happened to earnings growth please look at the balance sheet please look at the cash flows Uh, in particular look at return on capital employed return on equity look at cash flows before and after capex see trends in those that is where you see the turning points you know like for example people ask us that how did you make this call on amazon at 15 dollars which is was split adjusted now 75 cents when everybody and, and this means every firm on wall street had a sell and saying that the company is going bust and we had a strong buy we were in a minority of one and there was only one reason because in the quarter prior to that which was the last quarter of 2000 it had made huge cash flows it had made i forget i think 220 or 240 million dollars of cash flows whereas the corresponding period in the previous year the cash flow was negative the first time the company has made this kind of cash flow and you're saying the company is going bust <laughs> the, that is the whole point that many times even so called large names don't do the basics so if you are seriously analyzing a company don't just look at growth that is the bottom line not just growth and margins go beyond look at what's happening on the balance sheet what's happening the cash flows if you are if you're not familiar with accounting and finance then educate yourself if you want to do it yourself right that's pretty put ma'am thank you so much for that Uh, I think we have covered quite a few questions, and uh, so the, some of the questions are being repeated. I would request uh, the audiences. We have had a long session. We'll release a recording of this session immediately after it's over, so you can listen to it for the parts that you've missed. Uh, but uh, there's one more question that is kind of uh, yet not addressed. So that is, uh, in the coming years, uh, there is a fight that is kind of going on between pure electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles. So in case in that uh, sector, if you have uh, either of our panels has a view, we would love to hear that. See, I will answer it from a legal perspective. More than what I mean by legal perspective is not as a lawyer, but as a person who works on technology protection for companies. The biggest companies in this sector themselves don't know. They are there. Somebody is working on a hydrogen car. Somebody is working on a hybrid model. Somebody is uh, Maruti believes that the future lies in CNG. Fourth person believes. So it's not. What is happening is in a way it is like a dipstick for them also. So what they because what is happening is they it. like for example a company may be very proficient with its e vehicle when it comes to for example a charging vehicle but they may be skeptical about infrastructure in india 
there may be other companies that basically believe for example that india may have a lot of solar right? but solar vehicles will not work in india because of the ability of the vehicle to power because it cannot be going at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour so uh, so it is not known right now it is not as if it's a tested model right now there are price considerations here there are price considerations of technology that have to be sorted out which are not uh, being so, which are not so clear so uh, so it is uh, you know when the cng came and people put cylinders behind their cars many people that time used to say that this how ugly this is it will not work people were even putting you know it was looking very gaudy etc this it will not work but it then worked to whatever extent it did so it's a model according to me and according to what i study it's a model yet to be tested that's why i said it is very difficult at this stage to bet on which company in the sector will lead in automobiles and because we are not sure i say it is easier to deal with companies that cater to all these companies like this is which is why we for example bought auto ancillaries for example i read a lot of what bosch says just as a general example only decisions bosch has got listed and unlisted companies both in india but they talk a lot about mobility and what the trans, you know future is going to be so you can look you have to read on the reports of a lot of people like for example abb talks so much about smart cities but then in reality is smart cities whether it comes does not come what are the state considerations etc we talk so much about water purification projects what has happened to water purification where are those companies that are purifying water it's a very difficult call to take now if you say that a company makes a pump by virtue of which the water is sort of drained out you say this is easy it can work in water it can work for purification work in your home it will work in the fields it will work in anything so look what's happened all the pump companies are going up water purification companies are still sitting there right absolutely absolutely sir thank you so much for that uh this was a very interesting session but before we close uh, i would love to ask both of you to can we have maybe a you know a parting message a parting advice or a conclusion or something for us that for all of us that we are listening here today from both of our guests so ladies first so devina obviously will get first right <laughs> okay uh, so in terms of advice two basic things one is reading i mean when i joined earlier uh, i listened to a bit of talk about books and all and uh, that would be my number one advice that uh, unless you feed your mind uh, nothing is going to come out and uh, it is a very good investment because very often it is someone's lifetime learnings that you can just get in a uh, sort of uh, distilled form for a few hundred rupees i don't think there is any better bargain in the world i mean for example i'm just reading this book on demographics by amlan roy now this is somebody who spent a lifetime studying demographics and how it impacts economies how it impacts companies and, uh, and at the time i finish it i i get what he has learned in a lifetime I'm reading another very interesting book on evolutionary ideas about how uh, the solution to any problem has I mean, every problem, in a sense, in a general principle sense, has been solved somewhere, either by a person or a company or even in nature. So, I, I always say it opens windows in your mind when you read. So many other ideas pop into your head. So, if you seriously want not just in investing, uh, but to make something of your life, uh, then reading is 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 all important. otherwise you can have a job which you know pays the bills and you can go through life smoothly and spend the rest of your time watching ott shows or what but if you really want to be a learner to move ahead in life uh whether in a worldly sense or otherwise then reading is important in terms of investing or anything to do with the markets my one mantra is be data driven close your mind to stories unless they are supported by data so whether it's macro data company data industry data look at data go back as far as back as you can and test all your assumptions don't go in with a made up mind that this is how things are and look for things to support it charles darwin used to say that whenever i have a theory about something or a hypothesis about something if i come across anything that contradicts it i write it down quickly because otherwise as a human being the tendency is to filter it out so all the best so these would be my two top things reading and be data driven thank you so much for that ma'am 
yeah so uh, obviously i am a big proponent of reading so i totally endorse that and uh, i i ironically i use the same example when i told you that a few hundred rupee books is basically a blessing in disguise so you know there is no stopping even uh, i even extended to the fact that a 4 rupee newspaper or a 5 or 10 rupee newspaper also gives you so much if you want to find it uh, you should uh, you should concentrate on uh, you know find reading a lot it will also improve you as a person it will improve your ability to speak your your confidence level when you are in possession of knowledge it will improve the chances of your decision making when you have the uh, it sort of builds on your conviction the second uh, learning that i have is you know and this my team tells me that my they, my team tells me that you win so many awards you started writing book and whatever x y z what happens i said you know the date that award is given uh, that celebration continues that day but next morning i have to become a beginner because that my past is not going to write my future my past may carry some goodwill for me but i can always fall from the top of a mountain one my one of my advice is uh, is that every time when you have accomplished something relish it you must celebrate it you must give that feeling to yourself that you were accomplished it but next day start off with a mindset that now i have to again be a learner and i have to behave like a in a sense and i have to redo a lot of my things and that creates a innate hunger in you that innate hunger for example i look at my portfolio and i ask myself how can i improve it now in reality you don't improve your portfolio every day so sometimes you do nothing to improve it and that nothing is itself a learning that means you do not change lanes and you do not chase that those the stocks that are up that day or some news that is coming out where everybody is buying and and then you when you make a mistake you bless yourself and say that i also celebrate my mistakes by the way i tell my team that you know when my portfolio goes down i'm just giving you a market related example it's very it's the same thing in my legal uh, uh that uh, that if we if i make a mistake then we we must celebrate the mistake so what do you do in terms of celebration you say i'm going to convert it into a learning the celebration is of the learning not of take it's of the learning and say that you know i got away from a mistake and i survived i did my life is still here and i've survived and i have the ability to build upon it so let me now celebrate it so that i do not make this mistake the second time and that according to me are my two learnings and my total uh, gratitude to all of you for having stayed away so late it's 11:34 in india uh, and to have given all your love and affection and all your feedback please do share your feedback because people Uh, who hosts these events i'm not a host today i've just been made a co-host because i was inviting other people to speak but otherwise people who host them get very good feedback on the kind of question they should be directed you know instead of asking me should i buy xyz stock what will happen you'll buy it will make some 20% return and so what try and become a better thinker it will the rest of your life you will not need some of us you will be very enriched in your own experiences and you will do very well in life if you learn well thank you and good night uh that's brilliant you put sir thank you so much first of all making out time for us and devina ma'am for joining us and enlightening us with so much wisdom so much gems of knowledge and so much advice so it, it this session has been uh sabisar also kind of uh, summed it up in the same way this was not about uh, you know giving a man a fish but more about teaching a man how to fish so uh, this was amazing this was a brilliant insight and of course our beautiful audience tonight there are so many brilliant questions and again thank you so much for your patience for staying for so late with us Uh, not just men women too <laughs> yes no, I, i was okay. i was about to say that it's 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 kind of outdated now no, no, and one, of the, one of the books i have read recently which made a big impact on me was called in is called invisible women which is that the whole yeah. world is is defined and designed with a man as the default human being and causes everything from causing women to die more in car crashes or of heart attacks because everything is tested on and designed for men so sorry yeah. for uh, interrupting no, no, that's, 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 but you know no, i man. i cannot stop myself <laughs> No, that's <laughs> that's actually it's very good thing. I was about to say, but I was I didn't say it, but I wanted to say that. In fact, that reminds me. Today itself, in the morning, I was thinking there is a very nice poem by Rudyard Kipling called "If," and it's it's it ends with such a nice para, but at the end it goes uh, astray. Uh, the the last lines are: If you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything is that is in it. And what's more, you'll be a man, my son. And it's so unfortunate that it ends that way because the rest of it is so beautiful. So thank yeah, you so much that, for that, on that. that that was uh, you know uh, more than a century ago so we should not uh, yeah. we should not at least yeah. do it now yeah. and, uh, no, thank, thank you, you so very much, much and thanks uh, safir also for inviting me in and thank you all for listening yeah. <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you so much our guests and thank you so much our audience i really hope you have a really good weekend and a, a very profitable week coming uh, monday Good night everybody bye bye
Good night.